And good evening, everybody, and welcome to Blanchard. It's your Oklahoma Ford Dealers Game of the Week. Tonight, the Blanchard Lions play host to the Bethany Broncos. I'm Steve Marshall. Dylan Rivera is alongside, along with the rest of the crew from your view. Excited to be bringing you back-to-back -back action after we saw Westmore take care of Enid last night. A little better matchup this evening. Two 4A squads. Bethany ranked number two on the season, coming in with a record of 3-0. and And Blanchard right now struggling a little bit. They're a young team. They graduated a lot of seniors last year. Uh, they are 1-2 and two on the season, but Again, throw records out when you get two teams together like this, Dylan. Yeah, these two fan bases definitely don't like each other either. Bethany and Blanchard go at it every single year, and it seems like it's a big rivalry for just about everybody in the community. Everybody looks forward to this game. It's always a huge one. Tonight is homecoming, so that makes it even more special if you get the win, uh, especially if you're Bethany coming into Blanchard's home and you get the win. That makes it a, a little bit more nasty, doesn't it? It certainly does. We are all set to go. The weather is good as it was last night as we move into week five some of these teams of course uh, have a buy coming up or have already used their buy and played in that zero week contest so both these teams have played three games on the season I talked with uh, assistant coach Adam Forrester this afternoon from Bethany he told me about his club a little bit we'll share some of those thoughts with you and Jeff Craig the Blanchard coach telling me he only has three seniors on his entire roster so again they graduated a lot but they've been very very good throughout the last several years the kick is away. Blanchard kicking off to Bethany. The Broncos field it at about their own 13-yard line, running it up the middle. Nice return out across the 40 to about the 41-yard line, and that is where the Bethany Broncos will put it in play first and 10. Players to watch on the Bethany side of the ball. Obviously, Sam Brandt, the quarterback, is a superstar player. He's top-notch quarterback, uh, one of the best in not only 4A, I'd say maybe all the state. Uh, so you really got to key in on him, keep your eyes on him. And then uh, the other two on the defensive side of the ball, the linebacking core for Bethany is is up there among the best in the state as well. Um, those guys just really fly to the ball. Uh, um, a couple of real good ball hawks. Brody Claiborne, uh, 271 tackles last season. So they are some monsters uh, on that second line of defense. First play from scrimmage. Here's a handoff. Bethany using their running back there, number 40 with the carry. That's Nathan Jones. He's their leading ball carrier. He's a senior, six foot, 195. As uh, Dylan said, Sam Brandt has been their superstar for a couple of years now. This is his third year as the starting quarterback. And he, uh, has, he accounts for a lot of their yardage. Not on this play, however, as the Lions are all over that one. Number 23, Jacob Maston. He's a junior, six foot 175. He read that perfectly. Good penetration that time by the Lion defense. Yeah, it looked like Sam Brandt got his uh, gap plugged up just a bit too much, and he says, all right, well, I'll try to bounce to the outside, but by then it's too late. Linebacker's in the area, and he's brought down before he can even get back to the line of scrimmage. 
Short loss on the play. They call it third and eight now. As Brandt, empty backfield, drops the throw. Has time over the middle and a nice diving effort there to make the pass incomplete. Nice job there by number 42 for the Blanchard Lions. That's Logan McKay. He's a junior. They list him at 5'11 and 2'10. Yeah, ball a little underthrown. The linebacker able to get under it at least, but he couldn't quite grab it before it hit the turf. So that one's just going to be an incomplete pass. But uh, you got to put that a little bit higher up to where your wide receiver is the only one can get it. Get it over that linebacker. Make it to where it's just that receiver who can put his hands on it. At the moment, it looks like a three and out for the Blanchard defense, something that they were looking forward to and coming up with on this very first possession by Bethany. The Broncos going to use that rugby-style punt approach. Kick it away, taking it about the 25-yard line on the run there by Witt Carpenter. Carpenter's going to get it out to about the 40-yard line, maybe the 41. Now they're going to stop and put it in about the 40-yard line. First and 10, and that's where the Blanchard Lions will put it in play on their first offensive possession. For Blanchard, obviously uh, the running back is one of my players to watch. Bryce Maj Madrin uh, is a really good running back out there, and it's kind of a ground-and-pound offense at times for Blanchard where they just hand him the ball and let him go to work. Um, on the defensive side of the ball, Logan McKay, uh, is a great part of that defense. And then one thing that I've done a little differently tonight is just said, watch the O-line. The O-line is very important to this Blanchard team, and we'll see if they can create some holes for Madrin tonight. The quarterback, Colby Langford, a lefty, as you saw there, firing his first pass. A little too tall, incomplete. And that'll bring up a second down and 10 for the Lions. They start their drive at their own 40-yard line as they look to the sidelines to get some further instruction. Blanchard opened up the season. They lost to Elgin 35-20. They beat Anadarko 13-0 before losing to Newcastle last week 37-14. On the roll, pass near side of the field and incomplete. And a nice defensive play there for Bethany. Nathan Jones in the neighborhood. Or, excuse me, that's going to be uh, Jocelyn uh, Malaska who makes the play defensively for Bethany. Man, that pass had some zip on it too, so yeah, it he did. got there just in time. Uh, if he had been maybe a step or two too late, that definitely would have been a completed pass because uh, it was getting there in a hurry. Could see the setup in the background behind the young men from Blanchard. As Dylan mentioned, it is homecoming tonight for the Lions. Third down, pass play, tipped and incomplete. Looked like he was trying to hook up there with number 12, Mason Laminac. And that goes incomplete, and it appears as though a three-and-out situation for Blanchard as well. Now Sam Brandt on the defensive side of the ball read that one, and he was in the area, almost picked that one off, but instead it just falls hopelessly to the grass. But, man, that was a close one, thrown into double coverage, trying to fit it into a tight window. you got to be careful about taking those shots, especially against this Bethany defense. So incomplete pass stops the clock. And the punt is away for the Lions. Takes a pretty good lion bounce and continues to roll inside the 15 and finally down just outside the 10-yard line. So it turned out to be a very nice punt when you talk about net yardage. And that's where Bethany will put it in play with their second possession. We've only played a minute and 40 seconds or so here in this first quarter of action. Both teams three and out on their first possession. We told you what Blanchard has done, Bethany. Beat Elk City 41 to 20, handled Chisholm 36 to 13, and uh, really beat up on Kingfisher 40 to 6 was the final score there, and uh, that tells you that Kingfisher, as well as Bethany, Bethany obviously putting up some good numbers, and Kingfisher may be down a little bit this year as well. Brandt on the keeper trying to do the uh, RPO, and he tried to run at that time, and he ran into a brick wall. Yeah, defense was there really quickly for Blanchard. They got there uh, within just a moment's notice, and quarterback's got nowhere to go. Sam Brandt stuffed at the line. One thing I like that you mentioned is, is with that schedule, it, it was something that I had seen was Bethany to this point has played 1-2-A, 1-3-A, and 1-4-A school, uh, whereas Blanchard has played three straight 4-A teams. Um, so maybe that speaks to a little bit to why Blanchard's 1-2 and two and Bethany's 3-0. and oh. um, but at the same time, like you mentioned, Ben Blanchard is a young team, and that might also have something to do with it. So there's many factors that go into it. Brandt on the roll, now throwing across his body. Intended there, tried to hook up with number 22. That's Evan Rothwell. And the pass a little bit behind him, and there appears to be a flag in the end zone. 
Well, you can see it's actually at the five yard line. It's going to be against Bethany. Holding appears to be the call there. So let's see what Blanchard decides to do with that. They will take the penalty, scoot it back to just outside the five yard line. And that'll make it second, let's call it 14 for the Lions. Brandt is the quarterback. Nathan Jones, number 40, in the backfield with him. Bethany rushed for over 300 yards in their victory last week over Kingfisher. And now the referee and the linesman want to talk some things over. You can see the dads back there working on the inflatables. They get them all set up and... Boom, they run through it. <laughs> Actually use those for, what, probably a minute at the most? Yeah. Tear them all down and probably takes you the entire first quarter to put them back up. But well, I guess the, the positive thing, at least at Broken Arrow, was you got to stand on the sidelines for the game after that. So yeah. you get a little bit of an incentive out of it. Here comes Brandt on the keeper this time, trying to get up the middle. He'll get out across the 15 to perhaps the 16-yard line. Nice little gain there, but that'll bring up third down and long. No score, just underway. Homecoming tonight at Blanchard for the Lions. Against Bethany, the district opener for both of these two squads. Bethany next week will be hosting Hera, while Blanchard next week will be on the road at McLeod. Of course, Tuttle is the favorite. They're the defending state champion. They are the favorite to once again take this conference, this district, running play on third down going to pick up about three yards still leave him shy it looks like well, there was only three guys up front for the defense and five guys uh in that linebacking that second line of defense so that three five formation for blanchard on that play basically saying we'll let you kind of get your run started and then we'll see where you're going and we're going to fly to the ball and stop you there so that way you can't get to that fourth or that first down marker um, and that brings up fourth and three here in a punting situation for the Bethany Broncos. Roll it out to the right. Get the kick away there by Ben Lawson. Kick is going to roll out of bounds. And let's see where they're going to spot it. Right at the 40-yard line. First and 10. So three possessions so far in our ball game. We've not had a first down yet. It's been a defensive struggle so far here in the early going. Well, neither team is necessarily bad on the defensive end. Blanchard has allowed 24 points a game so far this year. Uh, which really when you look at it, it wasn't a, any type of a bad performance uh, by the Lions. And then on the other side of the ball, Bethany allows 13 points a game to this point. Uh, so both defenses know what they're doing out there, and they can keep teams to low score. Um, and it, it could end up being like this the entire game, just a defensive battle. Option play to the left. Quarterback is a left-hander, so he rolls that way with it. Colby Langford. Three yards. That's the fourth play from scrimmage, I believe. Did Madrin carry in that first series? I don't believe he did, did he? Not to my memory, no. No, so he hasn't touched the ball yet. We've had both quarterbacks throw some. Again, we're just in the fourth possession of the ball game. So the defense is owning the game to this point. Madrin back behind the quarterback. Lankford looking downfield. And he, he, can, he can bring it. There's no doubt about that. And tried to hook up there with number 15, Tyler Blackburn, but incomplete is the call, and that's going to bring up third down and seven. Yeah, and he can definitely sling the ball. You're right. He's got some heat on that, that throw of his. Uh, it's going to be reading the defense and finding the right receivers and putting it into a place where only those receivers can get it. That's going to be the challenge for Langford tonight. He's got to get comfortable with the offense and even more comfortable in his role as the quarterback now for the Blanchard Lions. So third and seven. Let's see what the Lions want to do here from their own 43-yard line. Play action, roll, and then throw, and the pass is incomplete. Defended out there by number five. That's Gray Adams, 6'3", 166. He's one of their safeties for the Lions, and that'll bring up another punting situation. And another three and out for the Blanchard Lions, I'd imagine. So we'll see. Uh, what happens here on this punt return, but I mean, for the most part, it's really just kind of been stagnant, three and out, three and out for both teams. 
Next ball to the line, number 33, Mandarin. Bethany acting as though they may come after it. They decide not to. The kick is away. Sails deep and is going to roll into the end zone. Automatic touchback, and they'll bring it out to the 20 yard line. 7.06 left to go here in this first quarter of play. Scoreless to this point. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, we'll show you some of our first half highlights. We're sure to have some by then. And of course, Dylan will check the scoreboard. There's some good games going on across the state. A couple of games last night where we saw Midwest City come from behind and defeat Lawton. Bishop McGinnis manhandled Northwest. We called the Westmore victory over Enid. And in another surprise, another team that is very familiar to 4A, the Newcastle Racers upended the Clinton Red Tornadoes last night. Did not see that one coming. So the uh, Racers now even their record at 2-2. Two two. Brant, quick out pass. Caught. And some good yardage, the first first down of the game, unless we have any flags on the play. Let's see who the receiver was on that far side coming away with the football. It appears to be Ben Lawson. Yeah, Ben Lawson, one of those favorite receivers of Brandt, actually. He really likes to go to him uh, quite often, and he's one of those targets that, at the end of the day, if Brandt can't seem to find anybody else open, he can usually rely on Lawson to be open. Lawson, last year, 571 yards, four touchdown receptions. And Brandt fakes the end around jet sweep, keeps it himself, goes forward for about two yards on the keeper. Not much there. You can tell the line defense is really keying on Brandt. Yeah, they know that all the offense runs through Brandt. Obviously, the quarterback, it's going to go through him every single play anyway. But what I mean by that is the passing plays, if you can get some pressure on him and get him uncomfortable and you play really good in the secondary, you're going to get him out of his comfort zone. And then in, in the run game, if you're – Got your linebackers like these Blanchard Lions do uh, ready to get to him as soon as he comes across the line of scrimmage. He's going to have a hard time getting into this game, and Blanchard has done a great job of that so far in this first quarter. Play action pass, throw it to the far side of the field, intended over there for Jordan Flinton. Flinton, another one of the returning wide receivers. That pass is too tall, incomplete. Getting back to Brandt, he threw for 27 touchdowns last year. He ran for another 25, so 52 touchdowns he accounted for last year. And obviously was a unanimous preseason selection for the All-State position at the quarterback spot. Not only that, but last year he was a finalist for player of the year for OK Preps. You know, he's one of these guys that was up there among the best names in the state. Dropping the throw, steps up in the pocket, still looking. Comes back and was looking at a different target. And the pass there falls incomplete. And the old rule says you touch it, you catch it. And Jocelyn Malaska right there with his hands on it just goes right through him. Incomplete pass brings up fourth and nine. Another punting situation. This game's just going to keep ping-ponging back and forth, isn't it? Somebody's going to break through before too long. We've only played right at six minutes of this contest, but they did get a first down, Bethany, on this drive, which started at about their, what, their own 10-yard line or 15-yard line, perhaps. Got it out to close to the 40. But they are punting again for the third time here in this first quarter. Fair catch signaled for, and did he touch it? I don't think they blew it dead. He's going to take it into the end zone. They called for a fair catch. He came up on it. And I don't know. Got to wait and see. Bethany is signaling touchdown, but you can tell they're not too sure about it. And they're going to say that it is Blanchard football. Wow, that was close. Yeah, the back judge kind of tossed his, his spot marker down and then almost just kind of stood there and didn't know what to do, didn't make a call. And all of a sudden, I see Bethany guys running towards the end zone, and it's it's all confusion from that point. Here you can see the ref, like I said, just kind of standing there looking at him like, well, I don't know what to tell you. And he runs down to the end zone, ends up they calling him down, but I don't know exactly why, how we got to that point. Why would you throw your your marker down if you didn't feel like it were touched. Exactly. All right, we got a timeout. No score. Bethany and Blanchard on your Oklahoma Ford Dealers Game of the Week.
Welcome back, everybody. Kind of a confusing play on the previous play on the punt by Bethany. As they launched it, it bounced once, and you'll see, not the referee, but one of the line judges throw out his beanbag, kind of signifying, well, that's where the ball was touched. I don't know. Again, I'm not a referee and don't pretend to know everything about that, but to me, Dylan, that almost signifies, well, that's where the ball was touched, and, and we'll go from there. But uh, Bethany takes it into the end zone, but they rule it Blanchard football. And then on their very first play, they muff the snap from center and a loss of the play. Well, and in the replay there, I could tell he didn't touch the ball. It was pretty clear he hadn't touched it. Uh, but obviously the back judge's point of view, it's tough to tell. Uh, and you could be blocked off from, you know, the return man being in the way or whoever. Uh, and that result is the... Bethany Broncos coming down, getting the ball, and thinking, oh, well, he touched it. I'm going to take it down to the end zone. And the ref's not real sure what happened because he didn't have a good view on it. And so we end up with that kind of 50-50 what happened there play. Yeah. Um, and I, I think they made the right call at the end of the day. It should be Blanchard ball. It should be right around that 30-yard line. Colin Deaton on the, carrier, on the carry there for Blanchard. Deaton listed at 5'10", 185. He's a junior running back. And very quickly, it's third and long for the Blanchard Lions. On my unofficial stats, we have one first down in the game. We have five punts already here in this first quarter, and we still have almost five minutes remaining. We may be going for a record here of punts tonight <laughs> if we keep this up. They always say special teams very important, and uh, further evidence here this evening. Third and 19, and a flag comes out. Referee threw it, so you've got to figure that's against the offense. Downfield, the pass is incomplete. Well, the call was early in the play, so my guess is it wasn't a false start of any time. It was probably more of an illegal motion type of thing. I think they had a couple of guys sweeping across. Or, I mean, not a holding. It was a false start or an illegal motion. Illegal motion, and I do believe we have a new quarterback in there because that was a right-hander that threw that pass. Number 13 is on the field for Blanchard. That is Lincoln Smith. He's listed as a quarterback. Madrin is out there. You see him, number 33. I don't even see a single quarterback out there. And I think I count 10 guys on the field. So it looks as though they're still. Well, now no, it's, it's fourth, fourth down, and 19. So That's why there's no quarterback on the field. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So Blanchard going to have to punt it away again. Bethany retreats to set up the blocking scheme if they can. The ball hits inside Bethany territory at about the 46-yard line. 47, 48-yard line is where they're going to spot it. First and 10 for the Broncos after Blanchard had to punt for their third consecutive time. So six possessions, six punts so far here in this contest. Now this is the best field position either team has had so far tonight, right here around the 50-yard line, around that midfield logo of the Blanchard line. Bethany should be able to maybe push forward a little bit better now since they got good field position maybe you go out there and you say okay well we don't have as far to go let's just get this first down and now we're looking at red zone territory so Blanchard defense has shown up definitely tonight let's see how what Bethany wants to call here on first and 10 from their own 48 yard line three man front for the Lions and again, that run pass option, and the Blanchard defensive line is doing an outstanding job on Bethany. I mean, there was no penetration, and they were driving him back. As soon as he got the ball, he was already met two yards behind the line of scrimmage, and that's going to be a loss on the play. Well, this is something similar to what we saw last night with Westmore, was those linebackers come in with a running start, and those offensive linemen are too slow to keep up with these quick linebackers, and they blow right past them, and they're in the backfield in just the blink of an eye. So they've got to be able to be quick on their feet and compete with these linebackers, or they're going to be in the backfield all game long. Second and 12 as Brant drops the throw. Has time, want to go deep. Got a receiver wide open downfield. Pass is caught. Reception made there by number seven. That's Jordan Flinton, and somebody missed their assignment in the secondary as he gets all the way down to the Blanchard 11-yard line. I'm just glad we've seen this game open up. It's taken us over 10 minutes to start getting into this game, it feels like. And, man, it is... It is good to start moving the ball, isn't it? How about that? A good throw from Sam Brand. He's Like you said, somebody missed an assignment. He's got a wide receiver wide open out there, and it is an easy drop-in 
to his wide receiver out near the 15-yard line. And just a short uh, way to go to the end zone here. Nathan Jones on the carry. Nothing doing there. Blanchard's defensive front doing a nice job. Big number 66. You see him getting up off the bottom of the pile there. That is Ryder Weiss. 5'11", 265. He's a junior. Rest of that defensive front for Blanchard. You've got uh, Weiss along with Braden Phillips and Cody Lemons at the defensive end spot. Your linebackers are Mastin, Bossy, McKay, and Deaton. Trying to run to the left, and Brant is just swarmed under. Great penetration and a nice tackle on the play by Jacob Mastin. Yeah, and it looked like great coverage down the field as well. That rollout, he had two options, kind of a tight end coming short, maybe about five yards out or so. Linebacker had him locked down and a corner with the wide receiver deep, so he had nowhere to go with the ball, and he had to try to tuck that and go, but he didn't have time with a linebacker in his face as well. Third down, call it 21 for the Broncos. And a great job to this point by the Blanchard defense, the homecoming crowd. As you can see, they're lined up along the fence. Great following here at Blanchard as always. Pass to the end zone. There is a receiver there, but two defenders in the area unable to come up with the catch in the end zone. And that'll bring up a fourth down situation for the Broncos. I'm surprised he was even able to get that close to catching the ball. That was a tough throw, a tough catch. Uh, two, two defenders in the area, like you said, two guys right there next to him. And he's got to lean back for that one in midair and try to pull that one in. Just a little bit too high, I think. But a good idea, I guess you could say. Uh, maybe had another receiver open a little bit over to the left uh, and maybe missed that read. But looks like they're going to go for it here on fourth and 21. Line of scrimmage is at the 22-yard line. So they can get a first down without a touchdown, and instead they're going to get an interception and a touchback. Witt Carpenter comes up with the Oski in his own end zone, and the Lions stop the Broncos once again, and they'll get the ball to the 20-yard line. Now it looks like they actually called it just an incomplete pass here. I'm going to watch the ref when he comes up. Uh, I don't know if he got his feet in bounds on the interception. Definitely picked it off. Watch the ref here. Yeah, he says incomplete, okay. so it's out of bounds. So. They'll get the spot around that 23, 22 yard line instead, but still a great defensive play and maybe throw up a little bit too much of a duck there for Sam Brandt, trying to force the issue. Obviously it's fourth down, you gotta take a shot, uh, but that one just a little bit too risky. Cornerback in the area ends up picking that one off and that could have been a lot worse had it been maybe in the middle of the field. All right, lefty in there once again. He wants to go deep, was hit as he threw the football. Pass intended out there for Tyler Blackburn, but again, heavy pressure on the quarterback, Colby Langford. Yeah, you said it, heavy pressure. There was a lot of guys in the backfield, and he got hit right as he let that one go. The southpaw couldn't quite get a good arm under that one, and it went a little bit too far. And cornerback was in coverage, and it was pretty good defense, uh, so it would have had to be a pretty good ball to find his receiver. So second down and 10. For the Lions offense, the quarterback is Colby Langford. See what they dial up here on second and 10. Langford going to keep it, and he's not going to go anywhere. Drop behind the line of scrimmage all the way back to the 20. Loss of about three on the play. Yeah, it looked like the defense bounced around that tackle, and he's really got to seal that edge for that play to work, and getting around him just busts the entire thing, and the quarterback can't get anywhere. Brought down for a loss of two. Bethany did a good job of reading that play, and it brings up third and 12 now. Um, and Blanchard's got to get something going. We've seen Bethany start to move the ball now. Blanchard's still very stagnant on the offensive end. Langford came into the game 25 of 52, 257 yards, one touchdown pass and two interceptions. Wants the throw here. Throws a dart over the middle, had it, and then couldn't hold on. Pass incomplete there to Gavin Graves, the sophomore. And it seemed like once the ball got there and the defender at the same time, the defender was able to knock the ball loose. It goes incomplete, and that will bring up a fourth down and apparently another punting situation. Well, it was either that or I couldn't quite tell, but he may have let it hit him in the pads. And one of the number one things you got to do as a receiver is catch it with your hands. Don't catch it with your chest. If you let it get into you, 
It's going to bounce off you and incomplete. And that may have been what happened on that one. you got to make sure you got your hands out. Let your soft hands grab that. Here's the punt by the Lions. And this one's going to roll way downfield. Somebody get there in a hurry. All the way down to the two, perhaps the one-yard line. Talk about your punt that's going to help your average. My yeah, goodness yeah, sake, that, that thing was, rolled forever. That was an excellent punt. That's exactly what you want. That was a long one, too. I mean, he was down there near the 20-yard line on the opposite side, so that was a great roll, great punt. And now you're looking at great starting position if you're this Blanchard defense, and if you're the Bethany offense, you're a little uh, upset at where you have to start. That's a 70-yard-plus punt. She said the line of scrimmage, I think, was the 23 so all the way down to their two-yard line is where it officially looks as though they're going to put it in play. We've got 50 seconds left to go here in this first quarter of play. Still no score. Eight possessions, seven punts, and one over on downs. Who saw this coming? Sam Brandt trying to get the Broncos going. Going to keep it himself. Surges forward. Gets it out to close to the five-yard line. And the clock will roll on, and we'll see if that may not or may well have been our final play of this first quarter. I think that was a good call by the Bethany offense, and I guess more of a bad call on the Blanchard defense. The linebackers were still sitting back. As I mentioned earlier, they kind of run that 3-5-3, three, three, and the five there were a little bit too far back, and in doing that, it leaves space for Sam Brandt, which I knew would happen. Would be a quarterback sneak just up the middle. Get yourself some room to breathe right there along that goal line. And now you've got room to do something like this. Handoff. Moving it out to about the nine-yard line. Still nothing going there. And that will be the final play of this first quarter. So it'll be third and about three. When we come back, both teams heading towards the sidelines. We've got no score here tonight. It's homecoming in Blanchard against the Bethany Broncos on your Oklahoma Ford Dealers Game of the Week. Stay with us. Our tradition for my football team is we dress up, shirt and tie. I had a tie, but I didn't know how to tie it. Usually I would have my dad help me, but he was deployed. And I'm thinking, don't worry about it. My grandma should know. He says, can you tie a tie? And I'm like, no, but we're on our way to Chick-fil-A. I recognize them because they came into our store so much. Miss Bertha and Mr. Terrence, I'm like, of course, I'll help them out and show them how to tie a tie. It wasn't just the tie, it's what was in your heart. It's my pleasure. Mm -hmm. Doing good, man. You got it. <laughs> Well, apparently, Blanchard called timeout right as the quarter was coming to an end. Four seconds left to go on the clock. It's not like there's a big wind factor here tonight that they would be going against or going into. But they decided for whatever reason, perhaps they didn't have the correct number of players on the field. That, that's always something that comes up. But it should be, as long as there's not a penalty or another timeout, the final play of this first quarter. Either way, we have no score right now here on your Oklahoma Ford Dealers Game of the Week. Blanchard is definitely playing as though it is their homecoming. They are playing hard and so far stifling this high-powered Bethany offense. Brant tucked it as if he, to say he was going to run, and then he... Throws it, it's complete, and then a late hit out of bounds. As we said, the quarter cannot end on a penalty. Now they may line up after the penalty is assessed and then just call the quarter, but we're going to keep it right here given what just happened. And I think a good call, an appropriate call. you got to take the right uh, precautions, the necessary precautions as far as late hits go, and that one definitely came out maybe uh, a second or two too late as the Runner was already out of bounds. That wide receiver on the screen pass was already out of bounds. And the it looked like a linebacker maybe came in a little bit too late. And that's going to cost Blanchard some yardage. And Bethany, well, who started at, what was it, maybe the two or three yard line, is now all the way out near the 40. So looking to see if both teams have made it to the sidelines there. And it appears as though they have. And I think it's safe to go to break here. We will try it once more. No score. Bethany and Blanchard. Broncos have the ball when we come back.
Drive a new Ford Expedition today with 0% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 cash for first responders. Hurry into your Oklahoma Ford dealer. Welcome back to Blanchard. Scoreless after one quarter of play. And really, neither team really even threatened. I don't think anybody even got in the red zone. Are we even sure this is the second quarter? It may have just been another timeout. <laughs> we are set to go. Second quarter action. First play from scrimmage. The quarterback, Sam Brandt. Two receivers to either side. Going to throw it to the near side of the field. That pass is caught. Not much of a gain. And again, the swarming uh, Blanchard defense holds them to a short gain of the play. Well, and Blanchard has not played to what their record says. One and two uh, with a points per game average lower than points allowed. They have not played like that tonight. It has definitely been all Blanchard today. Bethany, uh, on the other hand, has definitely played a pretty good game. They've moved the ball well enough, but not well enough to get into the end zone. So Blanchard doing a great job stifling Sam Brandt and this Broncos offense. Picked up four in the play. Brandt again. Takes the ball, tucks as though he's going to run, then pulls it back out and throws it. And this pass is complete. And that'll be good enough for a first down as he hooks up there with Ben Lawson once again. And they move the chains, and the Broncos will set up shop at their own 45. So how many first downs is that now? What, like two or three? I think that's two. Two? Man, a grand total of two first downs on the game. Well, they had one the on the pass quarter? on the penalty, so that yeah. would be the third then. Okay, well... Penalty, yes and no. I'm, I'm counting that, but I'm not counting that. <laughs> From their own 45-yard line, Brandt looked like he wanted to hand it off, but the running back had already gone by. He's going to squirm ahead and get one yard on the carry. And that Blanchard defense has really done a very fine job thus far here this evening. Assistant coaches Chuck Blackburn, Caleb Cole, Kirk Karchner, Cannon, uh, I'm sorry, Kirk Kirchner, Cannon Kirchner, Chaz Maddox, Greg Moses, Jonathan Prock, Adam Wayland, and Chris Cook, the coaching staff for the Blanchard Lions. I'll tell you a little bit more about the Broncos after this next play. Second and about nine, Brandt on the keeper, trying to follow one of his big guys up front. He'll get about four or five yards on the play as he decided to get behind the bigger side of uh, number 58, or was it 55, I believe, and that is Dylan Shire, 6'2", 218. Yeah, a couple of blockers out in front of him. Just let them do the work. You just kind of stay behind them, stay hidden. Let those linebackers and safeties struggle to find you and get to you, and it makes up for uh, what has been a bad offensive first quarter and now you get four yards you're looking at third and six you could end up uh, getting a first down as now you have less yardage to go to that first down marker third and six from their own 49 Brandt wants to throw and he wants to throw deep got a receiver pass a little bit behind and that allows the defender to catch up and knock it away the pass goes incomplete and that'll bring up a fourth down yeah definitely had a receiver he had a step on him just got to put it out in front of him uh, the wide receiver has is, is done a great job to get out there and blow past his, the coverage. And he's not even marked if, if it's the right receiver I'm looking at. Yeah, he wasn't even marked to start. Quarterback uh, switches over on the crossing route there, and so he's playing from behind the whole way. you just got to hit him in stride, and that's a touchdown. Trying to hook up out there with Malaska, Jocelyn Malaska. And now that'll bring up fourth down. They are in punt formation, but right near midfield. Here comes Blanchard. The punt is away. Fair catch called for, taken right at the 10-yard line. And that's where Blanchard will put it in play after another punt. And we have 9-13 left to go here before halftime. Still a scoreless ball game here on your Oklahoma Ford Dealers Game of the Week. Quite a battle. As we mentioned, we'll check in with some of those scores. May do, may do so once or twice before we get to halftime, depending upon what's happening on the field. Get some delays or injuries that pop up because there are some good games this week. Of course, most of those big games are the big boys on the east side of the state. Uh, Union is taking on Owasso. And, of course, a team called the Broken Arrow Tigers taking on Jenks tonight. So you've got one versus three and two versus four. 
in a lot of years, that kind of tells you the semifinalists. Yeah, it should kind of define who the big names are going to be this year and who's going to be in that uh, title picture for real this year. I mean, every year it's kind of like two of them are just a step ahead of the other two. Um, and this year, uh, I would say it would be, it'd probably be B.A. and Owasso as, as it has been the last two years, the state champions the last two years. Uh, I think Jinx... Now, obviously, after you saw that loss to Bixby where they got thrashed, uh, I think they kind of uh, have dispelled my confidence in them. Uh, and then Union, I think, is a very good team, and they could be that uh, third team that maybe plays spoiler to one of the other two, but I think Broken Arrow and Owasso should be the front runners in 6A. Quarterback keeper on the play, only a gain of a yard or two. They have not handed the ball, but I think once to Madrin so far. And I don't know if they're just trying to... Uh, Assume that Bethany is keying on him and they're going to take it away from him, but not aware of any injury when I talked to Coach Craig this afternoon. But they cannot get this offense moving at at the moment. I'd imagine if he was struggling with injury, he probably wouldn't even be out there. Probably so. not. If he's out there, that means he's healthy and ready to go. They just haven't made him a focal point of the offense yet. Here he goes up the middle, and there he is for the first down and the biggest play of the night for the Blanchard Lions. As he's able to escape and get it out close to the 30-yard line. Going to spot him down at the 29, first and 10 for the Lions. Well, let me tell you one thing, Steve. The cool kids always show up late to the party, so <laughs> maybe he's just a little bit late because he's the cool kid around here. Madrin, uh, Madrin just takes the run right up the middle, and he makes a couple of guys miss on these tackles. He's got people wrapping him up in the legs, and he just keeps trucking, keeps those legs moving, and a big gain there. And a first down for Blanchard, something that I think is the first one of the day for them. So it looks like he may have lost a yard there, or two. They're going to spot the ball at the 27-yard line. Lions looking over for advice, guidance from their coaching staff. We told you about the Blanchard coaching staff. Chad Maricino, the offensive coordinator for Bethany, will continue that as we go on here. Here's the jet sweep, breaks the tackle deep in the backfield, gets loose and gets first down yardage out across the 40. Now they're going to say he's just shy of the 40-yard line, but that still will be enough for a Blanchard Lion first down. Yeah, great jet sweep play there. It looked like uh, the play was going to get busted up in the backfield and we were going to be talking about another loss. But breaking the tackle and evading the defender and picking up a first down after that with some special blocks from down the field, some helpful blocks down the field, uh, and an another first down for Blanchard, back-to-back -back first downs for the Lions. Keeper by the quarterback, not much there for Lankford. He'll get about two yards on the play. Now it looked like another RPO, and he tries to sell that handoff and then kind of brings it back into his gut. And as he does that, that little momentary hesitation gave enough time for number 16 on the Bethany defense, Silas Carmack, to read that the quarterback still had the ball and bring him down just for a short gain rather than what may have been able to be maybe five, six-yard run. It ends up just being a two-yard run. Well, after we saw 54 points by one team last night, the Westmore Jaguars, we're still looking for our first points of the night. Just about six and a half minutes left to go here in the first half. Langford keeps the ball, and all that means is he's going to get tackled by everybody looking to see where that ball is or went, and he hang, hung on to it maybe a little bit too long. And as he is dropped in the backfield for a loss on the play. Well, and the key to that play is Jordan Flinton on the Bethany defense comes flying in on a bull rush blitz. And nobody picked him up. He was back there. I mean, the snap got there. Quarterback gets it. And as soon as he turned, it looked like Flint was right there. Uh, or Flinton was right there. So he had to uh, do something quickly. And it didn't seem like the play was developing fast enough. And play just ends up getting uh, blown up in the backfield. Big hole for Madrin up the middle. He's got 10 plus again as he gets into Bethany territory. Close to their 45-yard line. And a huge hole. Great job by the Blanchard offensive line on that play. Well, I wonder if they're almost just using him as a safety blanket whenever they feel like they can't quite get there. They'll say, all right, we'll hand it to him, let him do the work, and until then, maybe see if we can get the quarterback comfortable, maybe see if we can get the passing game going and try to pick up some yardage through the air. We've got a timeout on the field, no score, but Blanchard is driving. Bethany wants to talk about it, make some adjustments. We'll see what they did when we come back on your Oklahoma Ford Dealers Game of the Week.
Your Oklahoma Ford dealers game of the week. Two of the best teams around in Class 4A for a number of years. Blanchard actually won a state championship. I think it was 2011 or maybe 13, but they, they won that as a 3A school. And uh, that Tri-City area with Tuttle and Blanchard and Newcastle with that new Amazon facility they're building over there and a brand new hospital over there, you can bet that these schools, they'll enjoy being in 4A for a couple more years, but you'd have to think that they'll be 5A before too very long. Yeah, Blanchard 1979, and you jumped right over at 2012 State 2012, Champions. okay. That was close. Yeah, you got both of the numbers right next to it. <laughs> Here's a pass on the near side as they ran a little end around, trying to hook up there with number 32, Ben Farrell. That pass is incomplete, and that'll bring up a second and 10 situation. Yeah, I got to call the game. They beat Kingfisher one year in the state championship game. That was a, a great game, so that must have been the 2012 contest. That was the 2012 contest. one, yeah. It was 28-21 is the final score. They've had some good football players at Blanchard, no doubt. Running play forward. Two yards, three at the most. And that's going to bring up third and long, call it third and eight. Um, Bethany hasn't been shy of making it to those those final rounds as well. Last year, even uh, the runner-up uh, in 4A, and then 2003 state champions in Class 2A. That one was led by Chris Chamberlain, who went to TU. Um, so Bethany's had some good players as well. Had some good teams uh, last year. Finished 12 and two. Uh, so they are are definitely a team that is highly competitive. And I think in 4A, if you're a highly competitive team, that's tough to do. Yeah. There's some good football teams in Class 4A. Running pill A, and that is all messed up. Loose football. And let's see who is going to come away with it. Bethany is saying that they have it. Two guys still on the ground rolling around with it. Looks like they have equal possession. The Bethany guy has it. Now are they going to give it to him? And apparently not. Yeah, they're saying it's Blanchard football, and I think he was the first one to it. I think just the size of that linebacker pulling it away from the quarterback's hands, it, it's a little bit of a, basically an arm wrestling match for a football, and the linebacker's going to win that one. So at the end of the day, uh, you could argue that it, it should be Bethany ball, but I think the right call is, say, Blanchard ball. And plus, it's a fourth and looks like maybe 12, so might as well punt it anyway. And it's homecoming too. Exactly. Here's the rugby-style punt. He's going to keep it. He's got running room. He's got first down yardage. That's Madrin who takes care of their kicking. And you know that if he's got the green light, or he has the green light, if he thinks he sees something, to take advantage of it. And he did on this one. Well, and what I like about this is, like you said, maybe just read something, maybe just see something. Look at how none of the, the Bethany special teams defenders here are coming into the backfield. He's got all day to punt that. So instead, he says, well, I'll just tuck it and go instead. Maybe go see if I can get a first down. And a great idea and a great decision. He ends up getting the first down yardage. And now Blanchard, right there around that 30-yard line, they're knocking on the red zone. Fake punt, keeps the drive alive. And now they hand off again to Madrin. He's going to lose a yard or two. Good job getting in there defensively for the Broncos. I believe 62 was in there. Nope, wouldn't be 62. 60, 65, perhaps. Trent McFadden. 64 up front also is Gibson Flemings. I'll just call all the names out there. <laughs> Some of it, somebody got the tackle. I do know that. Number 51, Alex Millspaw, also in the vicinity. So a loss of one, second down 11. Takes it out of the bread basket. It's intercepted. This one may go the distance. Diving tackle made by Madrin off the interception. Pulled in by number 44, Brody Claiborne. Didn't I tell you he'd make an impact in this game? That was one of my players to watch right there. Brody Claiborne with the interception. Just reading the eyes of the quarterback. And right there, you lock into one receiver. It makes it easy for the defenders to know where exactly you're going with the football. And it's an easy interception there. Just jump up and catch that one. And he's off to the races there. And a good return after the interception as well. Wow. So Claiborne comes away with the interception. And that was the best sustained drive of the night for Blanchard or either team. And now we've got an official timeout on the field. They're telling Bethany stay off the field. 
So Blanchard looking as though they were starting to get into scoring position, starting to get near that red zone. And just, as you said, just a great read by Claiborne because the pass was intended for a receiver who was a good five, seven yards behind Claiborne, but he read it, jumped up, came away with the interception, and took it down the far sideline all the way to the 45-yard line in uh, Blanchard territory. Well, again, it's all about reading those eyes, and the quarterback, as he's handing the ball off to the running back, for the most part, when you're handing off, you're going to be kind of looking at your handoff. You're going to be looking at what you're doing when you're giving it to the running back. Whereas on that play, he had his eyes locked in on one of the receivers as he was handing it off. And so you've really got to sell that pass fake if the defense is going to bite on it. And Claiborne read that from the start and says, oh, well, he's not handing that off. I'll stay right here. And he's right there in the line of the, the ball, right in the line of the pass, ends up getting the interception out of it. First and 10 again for Bethany as Brant drops the throw. He's got some running room, chooses instead to throw downfield. He has a receiver out there, and it's intercepted. Wow. Coming away with the football, Whit Carpenter. And Brant again looked like he underthrew that one, Dylan. Yeah, back-to-back -back interceptions. How about that? Number two, Blanchard Lions. Whit Carpenter, like you said, he was right there on the defense. And again, Sam Brant underthrowing a deep ball. He's really got to step up and let that one fly. And he's on the move on that one, so I'll give him maybe a little bit of a discount for it being underthrown. But a great defensive play there. I mean, that could have been one of those where you say, okay, well, I'll let him catch it, and then I'll hit him. But instead, he sells out and goes and gets the ball, and now it's Blanchard football. Obviously, they have bad field position, but you'd rather have the ball than have it in Bethany's hands. That's right. So first and 10 as they take over once again. Blanchard deep inside their own territory at about the four-yard line. And a little confusion in the backfield there. I don't know that they even made it back to the line of scrimmage. Well, a bad snap. The ball's too low. Quarterback scrambling just to pick it up, and that's a different quarterback out there. That's Chase Fox, number one. So the lefty southpaw, Mason Laminek, uh, or not Mason Laminek, I'm sorry, um, Colby Langford, yeah, um, goes to the sidelines and maybe say, okay, we'll try to switch it up, see if we can do something different. And it may be a skill set factor, maybe one of those where it's just he's, he can maybe throw the ball better or he's a little bit faster, one of those kinds of things. And so you plug a different quarterback in there and see if it can make a change. And right here, he can't even get the ball into his own hands. The center's got to make a better snap. That was just about run all the way. Nearly got tackled in the end zone. He actually had to stretch out to get it across the goal line, and the referee threw a flag on it as well. Bethany, you can see they're asking for the safety. Well, either way, it shouldn't be a safety. The way he stretched the ball out, it should be around that yeah, one or two I yard agree line. With that. We'll have to see what the call is on whether that stands to reason, whether it be on the one and one or two, or maybe they say something about like half the distance to the goal and knock it back a yard. Holding against Blanchard. And boy, half the distance. <laughs> yeah, knock it back a yard, and that's about it. Here's a look at the replay, Dylan. Yeah, pretty simple play. Kind of a uh, quarterback keeper out to that uh, right side. And the running back tries to get a block there, but he's not uh, really engaging with that defender. And, and as a result, linebacker is able to get to the quarterback. And all that the quarterback, Chase Fox, can hope to do is just get out of the end zone and stretch it out and gets down, uh, I guess, at the one or two yard line. But the hold will bring it back another yard if it's at the two, obviously. And if it's at the one, they're going to bring it back to about the half yard line if there was one um, and so you're looking at your back is against the wall here maybe what head coach John Arthur is there talking to the linesman what he is saying or asking if it's holding and the violation was committed in the end zone regardless of where he got the ball out to may be a safety that's not apparently the way it's going to play out it's going to be Blanchard football they spotted at the two yard line and they're going to move it back to the one so they're going to say it was a penalty. Half the distance to the goal line uh, is going to put it at the one-yard line, second and long for the Blanchard Lions, who find themselves right now backs against the wall. Uh, just about the only thing that is in Blanchard's possession right now that will not be uh, in the end zone is that football. Uh, the, all the Lions should be lined up uh, within that goal line. So this is tight field position. We talk about, like I said, backs against the wall. You've just got to do whatever you can to get out of here and obviously third and 14 
it's going to be a tough play call to get that first down. Might as well at least just try to get out of the end zone and give yourself some space to punt the ball away. All right, they're going to talk about it. So are we. We'll take a timeout with just about a little over two minutes left to go here at halftime. Still a scoreless game between Bethany and Blanchard on your Oklahoma Ford Dealers Game of the Week. Right connection can open a world of curiosity for your child. With Cox, families that have a K-12 student and receive government assistance could qualify for low-cost home internet with Wi-Fi. That means more learning and more achieving. Qualify now. It's time to connect with Cox. Welcome back to Blanchard. It is homecoming tonight, which kind of from experience of years past will tell us it's going to be a little bit longer than usual uh, halftime ceremony as well it should be as these guys get to celebrate that homecoming just once a year some of the other sports also hold their homecoming during a you know a basketball season or the like but uh, for the most part this is the big one everybody wants to be the queen and the king I'm going to guess that you were the king, Dylan, back in your day, right? I was not, no. <laughs> I had a camera pointed on the king is what I was doing. Okay. Yeah, I, that was not my my cup of tea, we'll say. All right. The quarterback is, again, Chase Fox. He stands four yards deep in the end zone. Madrin is lined up probably seven, eight yards deep as well. They hand it to him. He gets maybe a yard off the left-hand side. A little more breathing room, but not much. Yeah, maybe like I said, just a little bit more room for that punt squad to get a comfortable punt away. And they want to talk about it a little bit more. Can't blame them. We'll be back. Stay with us. All right, there you see the particulars. A minute 38 left to go here before halftime. There are no points on the scoreboard for either team. But right now, Blanchard looking at a fourth and 13 from their own three-yard line. They've had some trouble with some snaps. We've seen Bryce Madrin, who's also the punter, keep it on a fake punt and get a first down. He's number 33 trotting onto your screen right now. So an interesting play coming up. Bethany stopped the clock because, one, they want to have some time left before the end of this half when they get the ball without turning it over. And they also feel like they're going to have some pretty good field position as well. Oh, and look at the way their punt formation is now set up. The return team has a few guys back behind that line of scrimmage now saying, all right, well, if you try to run it, we're, we're prepared now. We're not going to let you do it again. Yep. A little motion, punts off in low line drive type fashion. Coming up and picking it up at about the 39 yard line. Breaks one tackle, that's Malaska. Fights his way forward and he's gonna get it to about the 35 yard line. So good field position. They've used up a couple of their timeouts, but still just over a minute 20 left to go here in this first half. Still no score, but Bethany has a good chance to end it by getting some points on the board. And I can't say that either one of us really expected it to be scoreless at halftime. I no. think. Um, I was expecting probably end of the game we'd be looking at a, a 20 to 30 point game. Um, not in difference, but both teams probably had around 20 to 30 points. Um, but I mean, zero at halftime for both teams, unless they come out and have explosive second halves. Uh, this could be indicative of what we're looking at and maybe a low scoring ball game. Sam Brandt, the quarterback, empty backfield. Two receivers either side. Brant steps up, looks left, finds a receiver over the middle. Pass complete as he hooks up again there with Ben Lawson. Stop the clock, move the chains, and now flags come in 
long after, and I put my head down to write down some notes, so I missed whatever may have happened there after the tackle was made. Well, I had my eyes on the screen and didn't see what happened exactly. So our white hat for tonight says we got personal foul face mask against Blanchard. Well, they didn't need that. Trying to hang on here. Now well, Blanchard's defense has played well tonight, so obviously uh, they are capable of making a stop. This is going to be the toughest test of the night for the defense, though, as uh, they stand maybe about the 11, 12 yard line with the ball is Bethany's offense. And Brandt is a uh, quite a utility player out there, the way he can run the ball and pass as well. So uh, that dual threat is going to test this Blanchard defense for sure now that they are in the red zone. Nathan Jones is the running back to the left of Brandt. He's going to keep it, follows Jones over the left side. He gets it inside the 10-yard line down to the 9, maybe the 8-yard line with the clock rolling. As we go under a minute to play. And it seems like they're not really in a hurry. I think now that they have this, this close field position, they're just within about 10 yards now. I don't think they're in as much of a hurry to get these plays off. They know they've got some time just to make that 10 yards and try to get into the end zone. This time, Brandt goes under center, fakes the handoff, rolls right, throws. Here's the comeback pattern right on the mark. And the pass is good, and there's a touchdown for the Bethany Broncos as he completes it to Gray Adams. You can see that one developing all the way in a perfect throw and a great catch. Well, and the scorekeeper finally gets to use his fingers, doesn't he? Finally on the board is the Bethany Broncos, and like you said, Sam Brandt rolls out right, and he's got a wide receiver up at the top of the screen who will bring a cutback, like you said, that comeback route, and it's an easy finish on the throw there. Gray Adams, six points on the board. And now we have 30 seconds left in this first half, and we finally have a score. They set up in the swinging gate, and then after they get a look, decide they're going to go with the traditional type extra point. Number 17, the kicker is Hayden Stoops. On for the extra point attempt for the Bethany Broncos. Rolls the snap back there. Good job by the holder to get the ball down. And that was Ben Lawson who took care of that, and the kick is good. So with 30 seconds left to go in the first half, Bethany on the scoreboard first. They lead it 7-0 on your Oklahoma Ford Dealers Game of the Week. Ford Game of the Week is the best in Oklahoma, and it's live on your view, Cox Channel 3. Friday night, two of the state 6A Division II powers hook up at SC Williams Stadium. Three-time 6A Division II champion Bixby Spartans play the Booker T. Washington Hornets, holders of the only other 6A Division II championship. It'll be a tussle in T-Town when the Spartans and the Hornets open district play. It's Bixby and BTW Friday night at 7, live on your view, Cox Channel 3. Kick off your Friday night with a Ford Game of the Week. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. Welcome back, everybody. Bethany getting on the scoreboard with 30 seconds remaining here in the first half of play. A quick little out pass that they threw to um, receiver on the far side, Sam Brandt with the touchdown pass. Gray Adams on the receiving end of that. And those are the only points that we have so far here in this first half, again, with just 30 seconds remaining. Bethany all set to kick it away. Well, and I would imagine after the kickoff here, Blanche will probably just take a knee or do a, a quick run and just uh, call the half there, go into the locker room and talk it over and say, hey, I'd imagine if I'm, I'm – Jeff Craig of, of Blanchard, I would say, hey, you guys did a great job out there defensively. Uh, obviously, we let that last score go, and maybe a, a penalty and some bad field position kind of did us in there. Uh, but still a great job overall, and we can still go out and win this football game. And if I'm Bethany, I'm saying kind of almost the reverse of that. Hey, way to get it going there at the end of the, the first half, at the end of the second quarter. Let's keep that momentum going. Let's build off that and see if we can keep going. All right, so the kickoff has returned out to close to the 40-yard line with now just about 24 seconds left to go here in this first half. We'll see exactly how they want to play it. Colby Langford is back in at quarterback. We've seen his arm. He's got a big arm. There's no doubt about that. But he did not play that last series or two leading up to this point. Handoff goes to the right side. 
As they gave the ball to Madrin. And the clock ticking down. You can see it in the background there. Under 10 seconds left to play. They don't have to try to get another playoff. And it appears as though they will not. So, as I watch the clock and make sure that it does extinguish, that is the end of the first half of play. A good defensive battle back and forth. But Bethany scores late with 30 seconds left before halftime. They lead Blanchard by our score of 7 to nothing. Our halftime show coming up. We'll take a look at some of the highlights. Check on some of the scores from across the state here on this Football Friday. And it's all brought to you by the good folks uh, at the Oklahoma Ford dealers. We'll take a timeout and return. Stay with us. Tradition for my football team is we dress up, shirt and tie. I had a tie, but I didn't know how to tie it. Usually I would have my dad help me, but he was deployed. I'm thinking, don't worry about it. My grandma should know. He says, can you tie a tie? And I'm like, no, but we're on our way to Chick-fil-A. I recognize them because they came into our store so much. Miss Bertha and Mr. Terrence, I'm like, of course, uh, I'll help them out. And she'll know how to tie a tie. It wasn't just the tie, it's what was in your heart. It's my pleasure. Mm -hmm. Doing good, man. Yeah. You got it. <laughs> Game of the Week is the best in Oklahoma, and it's live on your view, Cox Channel 3. Friday night, two of the state 6A Division II powers hook up at S.C. Williams Stadium. Three-time 6A Division II champion Big Smith Spartans play the Booker T. Washington Hornets, holders of the only other 6A Division II championship. It'll be a tussle in T-Town when the Spartans and the Hornets open district play. It's Bixby and BTW Friday night at 7, live on your view, Cox Channel 3. Kick off your Friday night with a Ford Game of the Week. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. Game of the Week is the best in Oklahoma, and it's live on your view, Cox Channel 3. Thursday night, the Bishop Kelly Comets will be at Tulsa's La Fortune Stadium to play the Edison Eagles. What will the Comets do to stop Edison's record-setting running back, Sevion Morrison? Edison may have their hands full with Kelly's Cooper McMurray, as both teams try to get a good start in district play. It's Bishop Kelly and Edison Thursday night at 7, live on your view, Cox Channel 3. Thursday night is football night with a Ford Game of the Week. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. Right connection can open a world of curiosity for your child. With Cox, families that have a K-12 student and receive government assistance could qualify for low-cost home internet with Wi-Fi. That means more learning and more achieving. Qualify now. It's time to connect with Cox. Drive a new Ford Expedition today with 0% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 cash for first responders. Hurry in to your Oklahoma Ford dealer. Freedom. Welcome back, everybody. Your Oklahoma Ford dealer's game of the, of the week. As we said, it is homecoming. And we'll try to give them as much airtime as we possibly can. But we got a football game going on right here as the Blanchard Lions and the Bethany Broncos are going through this. And right now, Bethany with a late touchdown with 30 seconds left to go in the first half has the only points of the ball game. 7-0 is the score. 
with Bethany on top of Blanchard as we <laughs> dip into our halftime show. Let's take a look at some of the highlights to, well, show us how we got here or how we stayed here. Very close game. This is the fake punt that uh, Blanchard used early. Yeah, Madrin kind of does that rugby style punt on, on a regular basis. So he runs out to that right side, and it seems like nobody gets into the backfield or nobody's really concerned with putting pressure on the punter. So he says, well, I'll just tuck it and go then. And ends up picking the first down up on what was like a fourth and 12. It was a long first down, uh, a long ways away from that first down marker and able to convert anyway. All right, and then we're going to watch some defense here as Bethany's going to come up with the interception. Yeah, and it was uh, one that the quarterback maybe could have sold the pass fake a little bit or the run fake a little bit better uh, and locked in on one receiver, and those eyes tell a big story, and that linebacker able to read it and picks off the pass. He's right in line, and that was uh, one of my players to watch for the game, Brody Claiborne, who ended up getting it, and then a decent return puts him at a, a good spot to start the next possession. And then Blanchard would turn the tables on Bethany as they come up with an interception of their own. Yeah, a good spot on the next possession is what I just finished saying, and then they turned around and gave it right back to Blanchard. Uh, the long pass uh, on, the, on the run, so I'm, I'm giving Brant a little bit of a, a knockdown on that, so maybe it's not uh, you know, an easy pass. I understand that, but at the same time, he underthrew a lot of guys on deep balls today, and that one cost him an interception there from number two on the Blanchard defense, Whit Carpenter. And then Bethany will get the only points of this first half after a long penalty. Gave him a good field position to get the touchdown here. Yeah, the play action, uh, just a little bit of a hesitation from that defensive lineman. Maybe costs him a, a quarterback hurry and maybe costs uh, some points there as obviously uh, the cornerback gets beat by the wide receiver on a cutback route and finds him right there at the very edge of the end zone for six points. So there you have it, our score at the halftime intermission. The Bethany Broncos ranked number two in the state. They're unbeaten, but Blanchard has given it all they have on homecoming. 7-0 our score, Broncos on top. We'll take a timeout and return to your Oklahoma Ford dealers game of the week. Game of the Week is the best in Oklahoma, and it's live on your view, Cox Channel 3. Friday night, two of the state 6A Division II powers hook up at S.E. Williams Stadium. Three-time 6A Division II champion Bixby Spartans play the Booker T. Washington Hornets, holders of the only other 6A Division II championship. It'll be a tussle in T-Town when the Spartans and the Hornets open district play. It's Bixby and BTW Friday night at 7, live on your view, Cox Channel 3. Kick off your Friday night with a Ford Game of the Week. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. Our tradition for my football team is we dress up, shirt and tie. I had a tie, but I didn't know how to tie it. Usually I would have my dad help me, but he was deployed. I'm thinking, don't worry about it. My grandma should know. He says, can you tie a tie? And I'm like, no, but we're on our way to Chick-fil-A. I recognize them because they came into our store so much. Ms. Bertha and Mr. Terrence, I'm like, of course, I'll help them out and show them how to tie a tie. It wasn't just the tie, it's what was in your heart. It's my pleasure. Mm -hmm. Doing good, man. You got it. <laughs> Tonight. Drive the new Ford Ranger today with 0% financing for 60 months plus 2,000 total savings. Hurry into your Oklahoma Ford dealer. The Ford Game of the Week is the best in Oklahoma, and it's live on your view, Cox Channel 3. Thursday night, the Bishop Kelly Comets will be at Tulsa's La Fortune Stadium to play the Edison Eagles. What will the Comets do to stop Edison's record-setting running back, Sevion Morrison? Edison may have their hands full with Kelly's Cooper McMurray, as both teams try to get a good start in district play. It's Bishop Kelly and Edison Thursday night at 7, live on your view, Cox Channel 3. Thursday night is football night with a Ford Game of the Week. Ford is the best in Oklahoma.
Welcome back, everybody. We are at Blanchard tonight. It is homecoming for the Blanchard Lions, although I'm guessing with the band there adorned in blue that it must be the Bethany band that is performing right now. That's purple. Yeah, I would say that's purple. That's purple. Okay. <laughs> oh, I was looking at the first down, first and ten. <laughs> purple is the color, no doubt about it, but as uh, Mark Jeffries informed us, they had most of the homecoming ceremonies actually take place before the football game uh, this evening, so uh, again, better understanding what it is exactly that is going on by the band, who is wearing purple tonight, by the way. Um, what about some halftime scores? What else we got across the state, Dylan? Well, one of the games that we have already talked about was Owasso and Union. Owasso is up 27-3 to on the Redskins right now. That one is late in the second quarter. Uh, one that you asked me about was Dell City Choctaw. Dell City up 20-14 to at half. Good ball game. And let's see if we can find the Broken Arrow score on here. See if we can get an update on the Tigers and their outing with the Trojans. Broken Arrow up 14 to three right now, uh, and Jinx is sitting at one and two right now. So, uh, not not a good start to their their season for sure. You have to wonder with with those big four, and, and I mean, plenty of talk always goes on about that. And I realize we're watching a 4A game here tonight, but you know, with uh, Alan Trimble stepping down at Jinx uh, due to his ALS that he's uh, so. Uh, valiantly fighting and of course Kirk Frederick leaving Union several years ago and and moving on and and so maybe those days of Jenks and Union it's going to truly be the big four uh, as we've seen these last two years with uh, Broken Arrow winning last year and Owasso the year before that. Absolutely like I said earlier I think that Owasso and Broken Arrow I think it's going to be their year this year it's going to be uh, those two at the top of the table and uh, it'll be interesting to see if um, Jinx and Union can maybe gather some steam before the playoffs. Uh, if not, it's going to be kind of a two-team race. And Jinx, man, that, that's, I'm just surprised seeing that one and two because yeah. I, I would not expect that from the Trojans. Well, they play such a brutal opening schedule the first couple of weeks. In Class 6A2, Bixby is number one, and they, of course, were in action tonight as well, and they are really uh, taking it to Sepulpa, you said. Yeah, 47 to 10, and they got another touchdown from when I told you it was 40 to 10. So, oh. yeah, they're really taking it to Sepulpa. And both teams 3-0 and coming into the game, so you wouldn't really expect quite the blowout, but Bixby is a tough ball team. Stillwater's number two in Class 6A2. They're 3-0. Gunner Gundy, the son of Mike Gundy, is the quarterback there. Uh, and then Dell City, Sepulpa, and Booker T. Washington, the top five in Class 5A. Carl Albert, they're going for that all-time winning streak in class in the larger classes. And they need to get to 48, and I believe they're on 39 now. If they get, get to the semifinals this year and win that game, that would break the record currently held by Wagner. Right behind them, Bishop McGinnis, Tulsa Kelly, no strangers to being the top in Class 5A. El Reno is there at number four, and then you have Tahlequah, Collinsville, Tulsa Edison to round out the top seven. In Class 4A, we've already seen number one Tuttle in our season opener this year. They look like they're going to be hard to beat. Uh, Bethany, that we're watching tonight, there at number two. Clinton came into the week number three, but they were beaten last night by Newcastle. That's your larger school classes and their rankings here at halftime, where Bethany leads Blanchard by a score of seven to nothing on your Oklahoma Ford Dealers Game of the Week. We'll take a timeout. Be back. for my football team is we dress up, shirt and tie. I had a tie, but I didn't know how to tie it. Usually I would have my dad help me, but he was deployed. I'm thinking, don't worry about it. My grandma should know. He says, can you tie a tie? And I'm like, no, but we're on our way to Chick-fil-A. I recognize them because they came into our store so much. Ms. Bertha and Mr. Terrence, I'm like, of course, I'll help them out and show them how to tie a tie. It wasn't just the tie, it's what was in your heart. It's my pleasure. Mm -hmm. Doing good, man. You got it. <laughs> The Four Game of the Week is the best in Oklahoma, and it's live on your view, Cox Channel 3. Friday night, two of the state 6A Division II powers hook up at S.E. Williams Stadium. Three-time 6A Division II champion Bixby Spartans play the Booker T. Washington Hornets, holders of the only other 6A Division II championship. It'll be a tussle in T-Town when the Spartans and the Hornets open district play. It's Bixby and BTW Friday night at 7, live on your view, Cox Channel 3. Kick off your Friday night with the Ford Game of the Week. Ford is the best in Oklahoma.
right connection can open a world of curiosity for your child. With Cox, families that have a K-12 student and receive government assistance could qualify for low-cost home internet with Wi-Fi. That means more learning and more achieving. Qualify now. It's time to connect with Cox. Drive a new Ford Expedition today with 0% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 cash for first responders. Hurry in to your Oklahoma Ford dealer. Freedom. The Ford Game of the Week is the best in Oklahoma, and it's live on your view, Cox Channel 3. Thursday night, the Bishop Kelly Comets will be at Tulsa's La Fortune Stadium to play the Edison Eagles. What will the Comets do to stop Edison's record-setting running back, Sevion Morrison? Edison may have their hands full with Kelly's Cooper McMurray, as both teams try to get a good start in district play. It's Bishop Kelly and Edison Thursday night at 7, live on your view, Cox Channel 3. Thursday night is football night with the Ford Game of the Week. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. Drive the new Ford Ranger today with 0% financing for 60 months plus 2,000 total savings. Hurry in to your Oklahoma Ford dealer.
If you will now turn your attention to the 50-yard line. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to introduce you to the 1969 Golden Club graduate from Blanchard High School. It has been 50 years since they walked the halls of Blanchard. Welcome back, class of 1969. Also on the field is the class of 1994 Silver Club graduate. We are happy to have them representing their class this evening. Welcome back, class of 1994. Both classes will be recognized tomorrow night at the All-Star Reunion Sports Hall of Fame Banquet at the Alumni Building at 6 o'clock p.m. The 2019 Blanchard Athletic Sports Hall of Fame inductees for the 1979 baseball and football state championship teams. It has been 40 years since these two great teams brought home the gold for their school. We are honored to have them here this weekend and recognize their achievement. Their members tonight with us are David Pickard, Bobby Pickard, Chris Winters, Steve Wilson, Brent Mitchell, Charlie Birdsong, Gary Fletcher, Perry Brooks, Lynn Beck, Kurt Dillon, Ralph Calloway, Coach Jim Bowersock, Coach Sonny Vermillion, Ron Wilson, Ricky Harris, Chase Morton, Darren Yarborough, Tim Savage, and Gordon Romine. This is the 1979 baseball and football state champion. Several of those gentlemen have played both sports. If you played both football and baseball and you were a champion that year, please step forward. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and give a great big welcome to all of the Blanchard alumni. Welcome home. Ford Ranger today with 0% financing for 60 months plus 2,000 total savings. Hurry into your Oklahoma Ford dealer. Our tradition for my football team is we dress up, shirt and tie. I had a tie, but I didn't know how to tie it. Usually I would have my dad help me, but he was deployed. I'm thinking, don't worry about it. My grandma should know. He says, can you tie a tie? And I'm like, no, but we're on our way to Chick-fil-A. I recognize them because they came into our store so much. Ms. Bertha and Mr. Terrence, I'm like, of course, I'll help them out and show them how to tie a tie. It wasn't just the tie, it's what was in your heart. It's my pleasure. Mm -hmm. Doing good, man. You got it. The Ford Game of the Week is the best in Oklahoma, and it's live on your view, Cox Channel 3. Friday night, two of the state 6A Division II powers hook up at S.C. Williams Stadium. Three-time 6A Division II champion Bixby Spartans play the Booker T. Washington Hornets, holders of the only other 6A Division II championship. It'll be a tussle in T-Town when the Spartans and the Hornets open district play. It's Bixby and BTW Friday night at 7, live on your view, Cox Channel 3. Kick off your Friday night with the Ford Game of the Week. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. Welcome back, everybody. We're in Blanchard tonight. Hope you enjoyed some of the halftime festivities as we get to see the bands perform here. 
Homecoming tonight in Blanchard. We got us ourselves a good defensive battle. There hasn't been a whole lot of action as far as offense is concerned or big runs, big pass plays. It's been mostly defense tonight. Bethany scoring with 30 seconds left in the first half, and they have the only points of the game. They lead it by a score of 7 to nothing. Well, one thing that I thought was really interesting is I found this, this little factoid that uh, it's actually kind of interesting. Uh, Craig, Coach Craig, does the um, like post-game articles on the Blanchard Football's like website, their really? athletics website. Uh, so the head coach kind of, I guess, just goes in and says what the team did wrong, doesn't he? <laughs> uh, but uh, one thing that he put at the end of the article um, – from last week's game following that uh, loss to Newcastle. He said, since 2010, Blanchard is the only team to win back-to-back -back games in a Bethany-Blanchard matchup. And if Bethany wins this one tonight, they would be uh, winning back-to-back -back games. As last year, Bethany came out on top 24-13. That one was also a somewhat low-scoring battle. Uh, so it's a interesting little thing to keep in mind as you watch the game. This could kind of uh, be something that maybe breaks a little bit of a pattern here in this matchup. All right, so we'll see how that goes as Bethany prepares to kick it away to start the second half of action. It's a short kick. It's a loose football. And Blanchard is able to cover it up there. Good hustle and good recognition by number seven, Colin Deaton, to make sure that that did not uh, turn into a situation, so to speak, for the Blanchard Lions. See who they run out there at quarterback, as it appears as though heading towards the sidelines was Colby Langford. I don't know if he was getting additional instruction or not. See if he comes back out, and yes, he does. We've seen that he has a big arm, just not been able to hook up with his receivers for the most part, and they really didn't run Bryce Madrin as much as we maybe expected. He does get the call on the first down carry, and Bethany's waiting for that. He gets a yard perhaps, not anything more. And so that'll bring up second and nine. Just underway here in the second half. And Bethany on top of Blanchard, leading it by a score of seven to nothing. Like you said, Langford's got a good arm on him. He can really zip those passes to those wide receivers. And a couple of them uh, weren't really his fault on these incompletions he's had so far tonight. The wide receivers uh, have not been doing the greatest job of bringing those balls in uh, when they're on time and on target. He's had a little bit of trouble putting them there. But at the same time, the receivers uh, have to hold up their end of the deal as well. Jet sweep coming to the near side of the field. Lunging forward at the last bit to gain a couple of extra yards. I believe that was number nine, Quade Coyle. So that should bring up third down in about five. And with that last lunge forward, I think he got three of those yards just on that extra effort right there at the end. Yeah, third and five becomes manageable rather than it being maybe a third and eight, like you said. If he hadn't stretched that ball out, maybe it would have been a little bit longer. But third and five is a little bit more doable. Maybe just hand it off to Madrin, let him run up the gut. Or if you trust your quarterback to maybe find an open receiver on this one, let that ball fly. Third and five. Motion to the far side of the field. Lankford going to go downfield. Had a receiver. He's got his, his palms turned upwards. Say, man, I was wide open. A lot of pressure, though, and Langford just could not deliver. Quade Coyle was the intended receiver, and that'll bring up a fourth down in a punting situation on the first possession of this second half. Well, I'll give him credit that that was a good read. He had the right receiver in mind, and he was going to the right spot. Uh, just hit as he throws, and it ends up being a little bit too far out in front of Quade Coyle. Uh, but a, a good read and the right read and goes at the right receiver, just a little bit too much contact. Punting situation, Madrin will kick it away. Good high kick taken at the 30-yard line. Gets it out to about the 36, and that's where the Bethany Broncos will put it in play first and 10, their first possession of this second half. You're always curious as to what was said during the halftime intermission and what adjustments were made. And there's a good look at the Blanchard homecoming crowd this evening, as you can see, pretty full up. And across the way as well as they're lined up along the fence. Friday night lights in the state of Oklahoma. Homecoming is always such a special event. You always have family members turn up for the event, especially uh, you know, for these football players, these band members, and even those students that get to be part of the king and queen ceremony. So uh, it really kind of brings that community closer together on these homecoming nights. 
Short pass is complete. Hooking up there with the receiver, Ben Lawson. He's made a couple of snares this evening. And he got about five yards on the completion, so that'll bring up second down and five for the Broncos. Just underway, second half action. Opening district game for both of these ball clubs. We mentioned that next week Blanchard will be at McLeod while Bethany will be hosting Hera. And Brandt going to keep it this time. He kept it a lot during the early part of the game. Not so much here of late, but that time he hands the ball off to number 40. That's Nathan Jones. Yeah, Jacob Mast in the first one to meet Jones on the run. Stops him just a little bit shy of that first down marker, third and one. Uh, you could imagine probably just a, a short play would be the, the play call here. You don't want to take a shot down the field when you just need a yard to get the fresh set of downs. You might as well just get that, reset yourself, and then start making those uh, plays down the field. Don't want to do anything too risky. Uh, and one thing that we've seen is, is underthrown balls from Sam Brandt tonight, so uh, maybe just keep it safe here on this play call. Third and three on the 44-yard line. Pass complete. That's going to be good enough for a first down as he gets it out to about the 48-yard line and the reception by Ben Lawson. And I said early on in the game, he's one of those favorite targets for Sam Brandt, and he goes to him quite a bit. Another reception for him on this screen pass and just a couple of yards, like I said, just needed a couple of yards to get that first down, do a safe play call, let that wide receiver grab it, get yourself a fresh set of downs, just a couple yards out. New set of downs, first and ten. Brandt out of the shotgun. He's operated there, I think, all but one play tonight. And that turned out to be the touchdown off the play-action pass right near the end of the first half. Running play here is going to pick up about three, four yards perhaps. And bring up a second down. Let's call it seven. That is about all you can hope for is maybe just pick up around four or five yards on first down. Make sure that you get yourself into a, a an area where you're not looking at a long third down later in the possession or a long second down. Gives you some uh, open play calling. You can say, okay, well, maybe we want to pass on this one or we want to hand it off again, whatever you want to do. It kind of leads it a little bit more open rather than having to play uh, from so far back on that first down marker. Running play up the middle. Short gain. No, not really. Got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. And I'll tell you what, you have to be impressed with the Blanchard defense, the way that they have played against this high-powered offense for Bethany. You mentioned, um, you know, Bethany playing schools from three different classifications, maybe having a little bit to do with some of those scores, while Blanchard is stuck primarily in Class 4A. Either way, Blanchard's defense is playing a lot better than their 1-2 and two record would tell you. Brandt keeps it, pulls it out, and then throws downfield. Got a defender there, but he jumps in front. What a great job by the receiver on the play. The defender had it lined up, but Ben Lawson slowed down, got in front of the defensive back who thought he was going to get the interception. Instead, a touchdown on the play. Well, it's not quite one of those mossing situations. Moss, usually it's kind of a jumped over you and grabbed it from you. This one more just like he stole it from the bread basket there. He comes running in from from a little bit behind that ball, maybe a little bit too far out in front, you're thinking, and then all of a sudden he goes, ah, I'll just cut in front of him and grab that one. And receiver, like you said, uh, just it looked like the defender had it lined yep. up and just steps in the way and takes it from him. And six points on the board for Bethany, and now now we're talking about back-to-back uh, -back scores for the Broncos. Good job by Bethany's wide receiver as he did a fine job, Ben Lawson, in making sure that he was able to get to the ball and get it into the end zone. The extra point attempt is on the way. It is up and good. Extra point made there by Hayden Stoops. And so with just over seven minutes left to go in this third quarter, the Broncos now with a two-touchdown lead. They lead it 14-0 on your Oklahoma Four Dealers Game of the Week.
take another look at that touchdown pass again. A great job by Ben Lawson. Sam Brandt seemed to underthrow the football, but Lawson cuts in front of the defender who thought he had an interception and takes it into the end zone for the six points. Well, I think part of what helped is uh, Brandt had enough time to really kind of let that thing fly. A couple of times it seems like he's been on the mover, uh, a little bit rushed, and then like you said, Lawson just a great job to cut in front of the defender who probably thinks, oh, this is an easy interception, I've got this one. And then Lawson comes out of, out of the blind side and just steals it from him, and it's a wide open end zone for him, nobody in front of him, so that was the last defender and he ends up getting six points on the board out of it and like I said back-to-back -back touchdowns now for Bethany and we were talking about Blanchard's played a pretty good game up to this point uh, but the defense has relented over the last couple of possessions. Yeah Blanchard's now going to have to have something from their offense if they're going to stay in this game. Little squib kick here picked up at about the 32 yard line. Return man there is number seven Colin Deaton. And that's where the Lions will put it in play, first and ten, looking for some offense. Yeah, if Blanchard can get something going, we might have ourselves quite a ball game here. The offense has been stagnant, as you can tell, by the big goose egg on the scoreboard. Running back Madron has been pretty consistent with his running tonight, but has not been the focal point of the offense. It seems like they've tried to get this passing game going tonight, and Langford has struggled. And now you can see Chase Fox in the game. They bring him in every now and then, just kind of a switch of, of quarterbacks and a little bit of a change of pace, maybe trying to confuse the defense. And we'll see what they call here. He gives to Madrin, who takes off to the right side, fights his way forward. He'll pick up about five, give him six on the carry. They don't have to get it all back in one, one t you know, drive. Obviously, you can't do that, but... They don't need to be in a hurry. They just need to be effective here and, and take this one down. And really, this drive is probably going to define whether or not we're going to have ourselves a close ball game or not. Yeah, absolutely. And then obviously on the other side of the ball, Blanchard's defense has got to step it up again. they got to get back to that form they were in in the first half, earlier in the first half, we'll say, uh, as Bethany has uh, found the answer maybe to scoring on the Lions. Um, and if Blanchard can figure out their defensive side of the ball and get that back in shape, that's a steady rock for you on that offensive side of the ball that says, okay, well, we can count on our defense to get a stop. Let's just go out there and put some points up for them so that way they don't have to be doing all the work tonight. Second down and four. Every play from here out going to be big for the Blanchard offense. The give goes straight ahead. Going to get a yard two at the most. And that's going to leave them with third and about three. I think he picked the wrong hole there. He saw his blockers kind of pushing out to the left, and I think he was trying to follow them and kind of go behind them. But instead, he probably should have cut it right because if he had, he probably would have picked up a first down. There was a couple of yards before the next defender. He had some room to run and probably could have, like I said, picked up a few more yards, another four or five yards on the ground, and that would be a first down, a fresh start for the Lions. As you mentioned, the quarterback now is Chase Fox, the junior. And Bethany just read that one. Well, he got away from the tackle. What's this? What happened? Bryce Madrin going down the field, and he's going to get into the end zone. Steve, I was shaking my head. I thought the play had blown up. I'm with you. Wow. I'm, I'm stunned. I mean, that was that was a play call that it looked like the, the defense was just going to explode through the gaps and then just call it there, and we were going to be talking about another punting situation for Blanchard. Now this game's been busted wide open as Madrin just runs straight up the gut, and nobody's going to catch him. He's got that breakaway speed, and you see him get to the end zone. Six points on the board for Blanchard on a crazy play. That is absolutely crazy. The, the tackler, would-be tackler, just kind of slid off of him, and it looked like the Bethany teammates felt like, well, uh, he's got a grasp of him. We don't need to help. He's going to be dropped for a loss on the play. And quite frankly, that's what I thought I was looking at. Sounds like you were too. And Madrin takes it in, gets the long touchdown, but does not add the extra point as that is off and no good. So we've had a definite change in the temperature. 14-6. It's Bethany on top of Blanchard on your Oklahoma Four Dealers Game of the Week.
a look once again at the unbelievable touchdown by Bryce Madrin. It looks like he's dropped in the backfield for what's going to be a big loss on the play because it's seemingly Bethany had read it perfectly, Dylan. Well, you and I are sitting here shocked, but I can tell you one thing. John Arthur, the defensive coordinator for Bethany, is not shocked. He's very angry right now is what it is. You got to have more than one guy go to the ball and Madrin able to break the one tackle. And like you said earlier, it seemed like the Bethany defense was just like, well, he's got him. He's yeah. got it done. He's got him wrapped up in the backfield. That's the end of that play. And next thing you know, he slides off. Madrin's gone into the secondary, and now you're playing catch up with him, and you're not going to catch Madrin. Man, that was that was incredible. Bethany still waiting to come on the field. Madrin is their kicker as well. He missed the extra point, so the score stands at 14 to six. Why don't you try going for a 60-yard run and then kicking a <laughs> yeah, PAT? <really. laughs> hey, the 60-yard run part would be more than I can handle. <laughs> Much less trying to kick it like soccer style. I'd be like Fred Cox, who you don't even know who that is. I'll tell you one thing. There's one thing I cannot do, and it's kick a football. Yeah. For some reason, I cannot get that thing up off the ground. I don't know how they do it. Mark Jeffries might recognize Fred Cox or Mark Mosley, the old-time kickers who were straight-on guys. That disappeared in the early 70s. Here's the kickoff after the Blanchard touchdown. Bethany takes it at about their own 13-yard line. Return man slips up on the play, does get it out to about the 25, and that's where Bethany will put it in play. And we talked about how that drive was going to be so important, and it didn't look like it was going to amount to anything. And then all of a sudden, 64 yards later, we're talking about Madrid in the end zone, and we got ourselves a single-score game. Yeah, you may have said that just the play before that, honestly. You called it. Uh, and this this has just busted this game wide open. You could see a new level of confidence on this Blanchard Lions sideline. And even now, uh, with the defense, they're a little bit more pumped up. They say, all right, well, you know, this is what our offense can do. Let's go out there. Let's get a stop for them, and maybe we can get back into the this ball game and tie it up and Bethany's gonna have to find some answers because if Blanchard's playing some inspired football that's bad news all right so here we go first and ten for the Broncos Sam Brandt in the shotgun formation gonna throw to the left side pass is caught complete and he'll pick up about three yards on the play yeah, a simple screen pass out to the side, out to those wide receivers out there, and it seems like they're pretty comfortable with those screen passes. And they're usually pretty useful as well because it kind of catches that defense off guard, especially if one of the wide receivers secures his block, then it's just a one-on-one -on -one situation between one receiver and a cornerback. And if you can break through there, you're talking about at least, you know, seven, eight yards before the next defender. They give him three on the carry. Second down and seven. Handoff left side and falling forward with the ball. Number 21 for Bethany. That's Jaden Gilliland. I believe that's his first carry of the night. Yeah, I was going to say, I haven't heard his name up to this point, so that's uh, some new action for him. And a good run up the middle. It seemed like he kind of just kept those legs churning. And as a result, one of those linebackers was kind of on the backside and said, oh, I better get in there and help. And did so and brought him down uh, just a little bit shy of that first down marker. May have had a fumbled snap on that play. But Blanchard's defense, regardless, is going to hold there on third and short. And you can tell they're into it now, Dylan. They're dancing. They're getting the crowd into it. High-fiving, back-slapping, everything going on there. The Lions like what's going on right now. Yeah, like I said, some inspired football from the Blanchard Lions now. That touchdown gave them a spark that they needed, I think, and it is really probably invigorated the crowd is what it is because when you get those long touchdown runs you know the crowd's going to go nuts and when the crowd goes nuts that that feeds into what's going on on the field and those players start to feel that energy and when they get excited the players get excited and as a result we're seeing this defense kind of play with a little bit more of an edge now fourth and two punt is away fair catch is called for and taken right at about the 29 yard line for the Blanchard Lions who now trail by just a Touchdown and two-point conversion with just about three and a half minutes left to go here in this third quarter. So just when Bethany seemed as though they were taking the game over, as you mentioned, they scored on their final possession of the first half, their first possession of the second half to take that 14-0 lead. But uh, Mr. Madrin proved to be a little too slippery as he was able to break the tackle in the backfield. It was going to be a big loss on the play. 
and then ran it in for the touchdown. Well, and I think you and I, for most of this game, have been kind of waiting on Madrin to really get into it. It seems like he's kind of been uh, used in very spotty situations uh, or even uh, not really used in the game plan much at all. Uh, and obviously a, a penalty on the kickoff, or the punt, I, I should say, uh, moves Blanchard forward in even better field position now. And so, uh, yeah, I just was waiting on Madrid to really kind of get into the flow of the game, and it never really seemed like he did. And now maybe here in the second half we'll see more of his name being called. This is Fox on the reverse, the backup quarterback. There is a flag, obviously, in the backfield, however. And that would usually tell you that it's going to be against the team on offense. So we'll get the call from our referee. Holding or an illegal block of some sort would be your initial guess. Yeah, it looks like a block in the back there. And they'll back him up a few yards. And obviously you can't let that get too much to your to your head. You've got to let those penalties go and and forget about it and go on to the next play. And maybe that's what 52 was just saying right there. It looked like he was kind of waving his arm saying, hey, forget about it. We're going to move on. We're going to keep going, building off the momentum that we've got right now. And it seems like the energy is on the Blanchard side of the ball. And Bethany's looking for answers as Blanchard has really, like I said, started playing some inspired football now. Once again, Langford's in at quarterback. Left-hander tosses it out to the right side. That's Madrin who makes a spin move. And after they had a long way to go to get the first down, now they're down to needing about four or five yards, perhaps. Nice little swing pass that Madrin makes something happen. Yeah, throw the defender into the spin cycle. Comes down that sideline, makes a move. A couple of guys miss, and he's talking about now a uh, second and four, second and five, second and six maybe. Uh, after a great run after catch, and it was just a simple pass, like you said, just a kind of a swing pass out there. Uh, nothing too fancy or too special, but really Madrin does all the heavy lifting on that play and ends up getting them back into uh, where they'd like to be on a second down anyway. So the Lions break the huddle. Langford going to run it himself. That was Chase Fox. They switched quarterbacks again while you were uh, writing something down there. I get confused by the, the, the two bars on yeah, the shoulders. Uh, that's what I think, too. Uh, earlier you, you asked me if it, they had switched quarterbacks, and I was like, I'm not really sure because I was looking at the side of it. <laughs> so a penalty again against Bethany is going to give Blanchard a first down, and if Bethany was trying to take the crowd out of the game, they certainly have not succeeded in that because – you can tell that the Blanchard Lions are fired up. They're more excited. They've played hard the entire ball game to hold this Bethany squad to just 14 points on the night. Play the defense that they have, and now their offense is starting to round into shape. And one thing we haven't even mentioned on the air is this clock is moving quickly. We're already nearly at the end of the third quarter. It keeps yeah. climbing. We're talking about getting later in the game, and this score is still tight. Rolling to the left side, right side, can't find anywhere to go. Going to lose a couple yards on that play. Chase Fox listed at 5'11", 170. He is a junior. Well, with him and Langford both being juniors, it kind of makes me wonder what they're going to be looking at at the quarterback situation next year, if one of them maybe over the off season would, would take a lead or, or they feel more comfortable with one of them, they stick one of them back there for, you know, uh, 90 to 95 percent of the snaps. But right now it seems like it's more of like a 70-30 kind of thing with Chase Fox taking still a good amount of, of snaps. You would think one of them would end up at the wide receiver spot. And not much doing there as really the offense – Tonight has been Madrin and not much else. Again, only three seniors on the entire roster, not just on the uh, returning starters on the offense. That's three seniors on the entire roster for this Blanchard ball club. So to say they, they have their future in front of them, I don't think would be misstepping. The seniors on the team are Riley Taylor, also Madrin himself, of course, that'll be a big loss, and Caleb Ward. Everybody else junior class or below third and 18 
Bethany drops back on defense. Going to throw it to the near side of the field. Has a receiver wide open. He's got it. First down yardage inside the 10. Pass complete there to Quade Coyle. And somehow he got wide open downfield. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that is the longest pass play for Blanchard tonight. It's really been about the ground game tonight. And right there, finding Quade Coyle down that sideline, like you said, somehow ends up wide open. And it seems like maybe... The defense is starting to think the quarterback's going to keep it, starts sucking up forward, and that is just enough to make the, the defense bite. And then the wide receiver wide open on the backside of the defense. So now first and goal for the Blanchard Lions. Remember, they need a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie it. And right now, they want to make sure they got the right play called here, and the third quarter will come to a close. We finish three here in Blanchard. 14-6, Bethany on top of the homestanding Lions on your Oklahoma Ford dealers. Game of the week. Stay with us. Welcome back. Fourth quarter action coming your way now. We got ourselves a dandy of a ball game. It was scoreless for all but the final 30 seconds of the first half when Bethany got on the scoreboard late in the first half of play to take that 7-0 lead. They then jumped out on top on their first possession of the second half, led it 14 to nothing. And at that time, you figured if Blanchard doesn't get something going soon, this game is about over. But they did get something going. Uh, by courtesy of that man right there, number 33, your running back, Bryce Madron, who ran about 64 yards for the touchdown. And now Blanchard knocking on the door once again as the quarterback keeper gets them inside the five, down to the three, maybe even the two-yard line. And that'll bring up a second down situation for the Lions. Chase Fox gets up a little gimpy. Well, with a, a good rotation that Blanchard has at the quarterback position, I'd imagine uh, they'll just sub Langford back in and, and let Fox get attended to by the medical staff. And I don't think the medical staff gets a lot of, of credit for what they do. Uh, they're a great uh, addition to, to the sidelines, uh, as you, know, you see uh, those guys take care of these high school players and keep them in good form so they can come out and perform. Handoff, Madrin. Fights his way down near the goal line. Got to about the one. See if they may spot him at the two-yard line. Still going to be short, and that'll bring up third down. Looks like about two yards for them to get in the end zone. If it's me, I'm going Madrin two handoffs. I mean, he's, he's your guy, right? Absolutely. That's, I, I think, the safest call. And this offensive line has done a pretty good job tonight. I told you to, early on in the game to keep an eye on them. Uh, and see if they're able to create holes for, for Madrin tonight and see if they can get a good push going. And it seems like that maybe they just brought in a fullback and maybe try to get more of a power formation going, get another blocker up front, and let Madrin try to truck this one in. He does get it on a late handoff. Kind of slowed his momentum. He did not get in, so now it'll be fourth down. He got a yard, so they're going to spot him at about the one-yard line. You wonder if they have any wildcat formation or something in their offense. Well, and that late handoff came because of yeah. a bad snap, a little bit too low. Quarterback's got to bend down, grab that one, and then stand back up and hand it off. So just that momentary lapse, that momentary hesitation uh, lets that defense really start to kind of collapse in and get into the play, and it stops him shy of the first down marker, which is, what, like the one-yard line. So if they can just get another yard, we're talking about a fresh set of downs just shy of the goal line. All right, fourth and goal from the one. Madrin takes, no, it's a keeper. They're saying he got in, and he did get in. He did get the touchdown. Looked like Madrin had gotten the ball, but uh, good, good work by the quarterback to keep the football himself and just barely get into the end zone. And now the all-important two-point conversion to try to tie this ball game up. 
I think they're saying he didn't get in. Yeah, they're, they're well, saying. The line judge came in from the top of the screen on the left and was saying that he was in, but what you're showing right now is he did not get yeah, in. Yeah, I think he didn't get in. I think they're saying that he Did you see the linesman come in, though? I saw him come in, yeah, but, I, I mean, I was paying more attention to the spot of the ball, seeing if I could try to decipher with my own eyes where he was at, but uh, we'll have to see on this replay. Yeah, he looks like he's a little bit short. Yep. All right, so they did not get in. Well, but how about this field position to start? I mean, you got to bring the house on a blitz here, I'd imagine, if you're Blanchard and just try to stop them from even getting out of the end zone. And they move. False start. <laughs> and they are really going to be pushed back now. Boy, if you're a riverboat gambler and you're Coach John Arthur, you think they're going to send the blitz and I could just throw a quick pop to the tight end and it might go for 50 or 60 yards. Yeah, or well, more. That, that may be the best idea for Bethany because I can tell you one thing, Blanchard's going to be thinking run on this one, and especially in that I formation. They've got a fullback in the backfield with them, so they're going to have a lot of blockers going here. They're going in that power formation, and maybe you're right, maybe just a little quick flip out to the tight end, so somebody's going to have to keep their eyes on him. Let's see what they dial up here now. First and goal from the one yard line. And they're not even going to get out of the end zone, not even close to getting out of the end zone. It's going to be a safety for the Blanchard Lions. So two points added to their score makes it 14 to eight and they will get the ball back. Still nine and a half minutes to play. And that's just what the Blanchard Lions needed right there. Two points on the board, and then they get the ball back now, and they're only down by six, I believe, now, if I do my math right. I failed a math class in college, so I'm not very good at it. But I'll tell you one thing. They got straight through that line of scrimmage in just the blink of an eye. And like I said, bringing the house on that when so many blitzers come flying in, that basically anywhere you hand off the ball, whether it be up the A, block, a gap, the B gaps, the C gaps, wherever you want to go, it's going to end up being stuffed. There's so many guys down there in the box, and a great call on the defensive side of the ball bringing that blitz, and it ends up in two points for the Blanchard Lions. And now uh, this ball game, I keep saying it opens up, but really this is really opened up now. Well, it, it wasn't much as far as excitement or drama was concerned in the first half, but we've, we've had a, a very filling 15 minutes of football here in the second half, all the third quarter and about three minutes of this fourth quarter here. A 14-0 score is now 14-8. And Blanchard will get the football back. You can see the players, they're chiding the crowd, trying to get them even more into the game. Well, this is the kind of game you want to see on homecoming, and the only thing that could make it even better is to get the upset victory over the undefeated number two ranked team in the state. Oh, keep in mind, Bethany was in the state championship game last year and was just a touchdown away from winning that one. It was 35-28, and that loss to Tuttle in the state championship of 4A football. So this is a team that finished second last year and, like you said, is now ranked second now. So they have always been just that, that next team. And if Blanchard can pull this off, that's quite a win for a young team. Blanchard picks up the ball at the 37-yard line. Got some running room. Look out here. Goes with Carpenter. Carpenter along the far sideline. Finally tripped up. Shoestring touchdown saving tackle on the far sideline. All the way down to the Bethany 15-yard line. How about that return? I was not expecting quite the return from a squib kick. That's one thing the squib kick is supposed to prevent is a big return. But the return man at the very back ends up getting the ball, that back line of it. And he ends up taking it. Quite a ways. Now we're talking about within the 20-yard line already. They're in the red zone just like that, and they're only down by six, and we've still got nine minutes to go, Steve. All right, very interesting football game as it has turned out. I don't know if you caught it, but there was a, a block kind of behind the play that one of the Blanchard blockers just rode the Bethany player out of bounds. Interesting tidbit on that carry. Here's Madrin going forward for about two yards. Well, and if you're Blanchard, if you can keep this momentum going, especially if you can get another score on the board, you know this crowd's going to really get into the game at that point and, and home field advantage takes over, especially on a homecoming night when the stands are going to be full. You know, uh, not only is it a homecoming night, I should mention, it's also a rivalry night uh, as you're playing Bethany and, and that's a team that all the fans don't really like when you come to this side of town. And so uh, Blanchard, only down by six. They can put another score on the board here as they're in the red zone, and they can really start to, to just explode for Blanchard if Bethany doesn't get it under control. Lions going to throw it. 
pass is complete. As he is able to hook up with number nine, that is Quade Coyle once again. And a first down inside the five, down to about the, then they're going to mark it at about the four yard line. First and goal to go for the Lions. I don't think that's the greatest spot in the world. Maybe another yard yeah, up. I think but, so too. Uh, it is what it is. And we've seen Quade Coyle start to come in late and start to make his appearance uh, here in this fourth quarter. As earlier, there was a long third down. I want to say it was like third and 18. And he ends up completing a pass to Quade Coyle. That was actually at the end of the third quarter. I think that was like one of the last plays of the third quarter. And now we're talking about him getting him right inside that five-yard line and a possible scoring opportunity here. Keeper by the quarterback, Fox. And no gain on the play as they're going to spot him down just about at the same line of scrimmage. He fakes the handoff to, to Madrin, but just doesn't seem to have that burst of speed once, once he decides that he's going to keep the football. Well, but you know this defense is keyed in on Madrin. You know they're waiting on that handoff to the running back, and so they're all kind of sucking towards Madrin. So it's the right idea to kind of fake it off to him. You've just got to get those blocks in front of the quarterback, and he's got to pick the right gap. And like you said, he's got to burst through it. And so if he can get all those intangibles in and, and mix it all up together, you're going to end up with a touchdown run. Second and goal from the four. Madrin takes the handoff. Fights his way down to the three-yard line. Not much there. Good job by the Bethany defense. Well, we didn't think it was going to be a very close game when we started on the contest this evening. Then we thought it was kind of a slow and, frankly, a little bit of a boring game since it was so defensive-minded, scoreless until 30 seconds left to go in the half, and now we've got ourselves a... A regular old Donnybrook going on here. Well, I enjoyed the defensive side of the ball in the first half. It was a real defensive battle. I enjoyed it, uh, and it was still interesting to watch, and it was still really cool to see how these defenses were almost just going back and forth with each other. Uh, but now uh, you see offense, and the offense is always exciting as well, especially uh, the way it has gone so far tonight. So uh, it's definitely picking up, and as the clock continues to tick down, it gets more and more exciting. All right, we'll take a timeout and be back with more on your Oklahoma Ford Dealers Game of the Week. Oklahoma Ford Dealers game of the week. It's been a good one. And promises to be the rest of the way with just 634 remaining in the contest. Blanchard looking at a third and goal to go from the Bethany three-yard line. A touchdown would tie it, and then any type of extra point would give Blanchard the lead. Well, if you're an Enid fan and you're watching this, I promised you yesterday this was going to be a good game, so I came through on my promise. Here's the snap back. He's going to be dropped. A loss on the play. Nowhere for Fox to go. And you know they're going to key on Madrin. I think they feel as though they can, they have enough time and enough speed on defense to, to run down Fox from wherever he's coming. It's almost like you have, have to have a third party in, involved here, Dylan. Well, here, here's my question to you, Steve. Do you think you, you get comfortable enough to where you throw the ball in this instance? you got a little bit more space now to work with, not so tight in coverage. Uh, and can one of those wide receivers break away? That's kind of what I was suggesting. Uh oh what are they going to do? It looks like they might take another timeout. No, they're going to – they're deciding out there. See Tyler Blackburn, number 15, a receiver. Curious as to what they're going to play, and the clock has eroded to the point where they're going to take another timeout. They got to get it right. It's fourth and goal from the five when we come back right after this timeout.
Well, there's still 5.41 left to go, but you could say that the outcome of this game probably is going to hinge on this call, this play, this execution right here, Dylan, with a fourth and goal from the five. Blanchard with the football trailing by six. Well, with 5.41, I don't want to lock it into just this play could decide it, but it does have a really big factor in it. If Blanchard is able to convert here, and even if they're able to find the end zone, that's definitely going to change the complexion of this game, and Bethany's going to be playing from behind for the first time tonight. And it's going to be uh, within five and a half minutes, I'd imagine, somewhere around that ballpark that they're going to have to drive down the field on this Blanchard defense, who has been pretty stout tonight. Only giving up those 14 points is pretty impressive, as this Bethany offense has been something of a, a wonder over the last few games. And uh, Blanchard, obviously, if they, they fall short of getting into the end zone here, they're going to have to play solid, stout defense and then go out and, and try to get the ball back and put some points on the board on the next possession. Fox is the quarterback. Madrin is off to his left, number 33. Rolling, looking, in trouble. Gets a block, throws back of the end zone. It's deflected and bounces all the way out to the seven-yard line, but incomplete, and Bethany will take over on downs. Well, and here's the bright side for Blanchard in all of this. It's bad field position now for Bethany, and that defense has been really rock solid tonight. So if they can go out and get another stop and maybe even another safety we're talking about possibly, uh, they can get kind of some momentum back on their side. But right here, throwing across your body, rolling out to the right, it's, it's not smart, especially with all the coverage that's back there. Uh, I think there could have been maybe a better play call. I also saw... A wide receiver right off the line of scrimmage to the left kind of did a, a quick in and out, and it seemed like he was open for a split second, but maybe wasn't the safest pass as there were some defenders in the area, and the quarterback maybe didn't feel confident enough to let that one go. Maybe hadn't gone through all of his progressions yet, going through the reads and trying to find those open receivers, um, and ends up just falling incomplete, and, and I was really waiting on somebody to come flying in and catch that bounce back because, like yeah. you said, it flew way back to about the five, six-yard line. All right, we mentioned earlier that in their victory over Kingfisher last week, Bethany rushed for 300 yards in that game. They have not had anywhere near that success tonight against Blanchard. And you've got to delay a game call now against Bethany. So that's going to move them even closer to their own end zone. Well, for both of these teams, next week looks a lot better for them. Next game for Blanchard is at McLeod. And McLeod is... Uh, allowing 39 points a game right now. And then on the other side of it, Bethany plays Hera next week, who is 0-2, and they've allowed 42 points a game. Handoff trying to get out of the shadow of the end zone. He's going to be tackled in the end zone. However, they'll mark him down at about the two. He got enough forward progress, did Nathan Jones. So if Blanchard does get the ball back, and it looks like they should, Looking now at a third down. Is it third down or is it second? Second. Second down. After the penalty and then the play there. 14 yards to go. Now what's tough here is that clock continues to tick away. So if, if Blanchard wants to get back into it, they're going to have to really make some quick stops here. Going to throw the ball down the middle of the field and it's complete. Big play. Big conversion there as they get the pass to number seven, Jordan Flinton. And he's going to get it all the way out to the 35-yard line, and you can see the Bethany sideline. That was a big, big play right there. Well, one of those wide receivers came flying in on the, the left side of your screen to come get a block, and it looked like he had missed number nine. And if he had uh, gotten number nine on that Blanchard defense, Quade Coyle, I'd imagine this could have busted open for even longer. Right here you'll see it. If he had gotten a hold of that block, we're talking about maybe a 60, 70-plus yard reception, and that would have been a big play there for Bethany. But even so, out of the end zone now, out of the, that situation, where your heels are on the goal line and now out at the 35 yard line with just a little over four minutes to go you can start to settle in and maybe start to pick up some yardage and, and take this Blanchard team out of the game and they may have just done that Sam Brandt racing down the sideline going to get caught from behind drug down at about the 15 yard line and the biggest play of the night for Sam Brandt 
and the Bethany offense. Now Sam Brandt, a guy that we expected to really come into this game and just have a major impact on it. And to this point, not to say that he hasn't, he has been relatively quiet compared to his last few performances. And now we see him take off on the ground, and he had 138 yards last game. And right there, picking up about maybe, what, 60, 70 yards? Yeah. And so a huge run there for Sam Brandt, uh, a guy who's gotten multiple offers from different schools and, and a big name in high school football right now and, and somebody who Blanchard has kept relatively quiet tonight. Nathan Jones in the backfield. They're going to put it in the air once again, however. The pass is complete. Short gain on the play. Ben Lawson coming up with another reception. He's got at least a half dozen catches on the night. Yeah, another screen pass out to him. Let him go to work out there just in a one-on-one -on -one situation. But that screen pass was read by the Blanchard defense, and they were there in a jiffy. And, and as soon as he catches that one, makes one move, and, and then there's two, three Lions right there in front of him. So the Blanchard defense has been so tough all night long. They need to come up with a turnover here soon. Trailing by six. Bethany with the football. Brant, straight run, looks for the hole, lunges forward, gets it inside the 10 down to the six yard line. And now, as you said, you can see where Bethany's just trying to chew up some clock, keep the football, and get out of here and escape with a victory. Yeah, and it feels like the wind has kind of been taken out of the sails of the Blanchard Lions. Bethany, after that long run from Brandt, uh, is now in the red zone, third and three here. And like, like you said, and like I, I mentioned earlier, it's going to be this ground game that's going to end up kind of making or breaking it for the Broncos here as they continue to let this clock tick away. And Blanchard's going to have to get a stop quickly. Third and three, Jones, left side. Cuts it back, gets inside the five-yard line. That should be pretty close to the necessary yardage for the first down. I think he's still shy, still needs a little bit. And that'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, fourth and very short here. And uh, the run should keep the clock going. And so we are now entering that two-minute territory. And that's where it starts to get uh, into crunch time for the Blanchard Lions, as if it already isn't. But uh, two minutes left, that's uh, about the cutoff for, for what you want to see. And you want to give your offense about two minutes to work. And now it looks like a timeout by the Bethany side of things with a minute 56 to go. All right, 14-8 our score. Broncos on top of the Lions on your Oklahoma Ford dealers. Game of the week. We'll be back. a new Ford Expedition today with 0% financing for 72 months plus 1,000 cash for first responders. Hurry in to your Oklahoma Ford dealer. Welcome back to Blanchard, everybody. The Lions, well, they, they're they just short of needing really a miracle. They need a stop here on the Bethany 4th and 2 play that is coming up. And then they have to take it the length of the field not only get into the end zone, but then add the extra point. The eight points that you see there was not a two-point conversion. It was an earlier safety. Yeah, and Bethany started all the way down at, like, the three-yard line because it started out at the six or so, yeah. and then a delay of game brought it back a few, few more yards, and so... Uh, the possession started in a very bad spot for Bethany and then a short kind of slant pattern across the middle opened him up, brought him out to about the 35, and then Sam Brandt, a long run, and it looks like right heel, they'll, ju they'll just try to seal it with a field goal kick. Hayden Stoops is the kicker. Lawson the holder. Snap back, ball down. The kick is good, and that should, for all intents and purposes, seal it for the Bethany Broncos as Stoops very calmly, coolly put it through the uprights to make the league now 17-8 in favor of the Broncos. Another timeout from your Oklahoma Ford dealers, and then we're back. 
The Four Game of the Week is the best in Oklahoma, and it's live on your view, Cox Channel 3. Friday night, two of the state's 6A Division II powers hook up at SC Williams Stadium. Three-time 6A Division II champion Big Smith Spartans play the Booker T. Washington Hornets, holders of the only other 6A Division II championship. It'll be a tussle in T-Town when the Spartans and the Hornets open district play. It's Bixby and BTW Friday night at 7, live on your view, Cox Channel 3. Kick off your Friday night with the Ford Game of the Week. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. Hayden Stoops with a big field goal for Bethany with just a minute 31 left to go. Increases their lead now to a two-possession game as they're on top of Blanchard 17-8 and what is really a kind of an old school type game that we've seen here tonight after watching Westmore throw the ball all over the field last night putting 54 points on the board to watch these two guys just get out there in a, in a street fight and just slug away on each other it's been a good ball game a close ball game Blanchard has certainly played tough despite their one and two record taking the number two ranked team in the state the team that was runner up in the state championship game last year all the way down the wire yeah, and it took us about 18, 19 minutes to even get into the game. It was 0-0 for the longest time. We were saying, is anybody really going to get into this game? It was just punt after punt after punt. And then Bethany punches it in right before halftime and then gets the ball back after the break, punches it in again. We're talking about a 14 nothing game. We were saying Blanchard's got to do something. And we saw Madrin just bust a huge run open. And it is six points on the board. The missed PAT put him at six only. And so it was 14-6. Then the safety brings him to eight. And now the... Field goal from Stoops makes it 17-8, and it's now a two-possession game with just a minute and a half with Blanchard behind. Kickoff return to about the 43-yard line. That's where the Lions will put it in play. Now with just a minute 25 remaining. As we mentioned, for both these squads, the rest of the season, you look at the teams in this, in this conference, in this district, they obviously have number one Tuttle that they'll both have to deal with. But the McLeods, the Tecumsehs, Medills, Cushings, Hera, those are much more winnable games down the stretch. They play the toughest part of their schedule after they conclude against each other here tonight. Well, I mentioned a little while earlier that both of these teams not necessarily get a, a game off or anybody you want to overlook, but they get McLeod next week if you're Blanchard. They're 0-3 and 0-2 Hera for Bethany next week. So a couple of games that maybe after this tough contest you get to kind of sit back and say, all right, maybe we don't have to push the gas pedal so hard this week. Blanchard still has hope. Going to throw the ball downfield, and it's tipped and intercepted. Pass was a little too high and intercepting the football and then running out of bounds with it. Probably not a, not a bad play there. Number 33, that's Malaska. And he's able to get it out of bounds, and Bethany will take over. You can't look at an uh, interception and say it was a bad play. So, I mean, it was a, a good read there, and it kind of seemed like it was just overthrown, if anything. Yeah. Um, and he's playing that safety position just there in case uh, he breaks loose or breaks free and uh, ends up just going over the head of uh, the intended receiver, and it just falls right into his lap. Jocelyn Malaska ends up catching the ball and, and getting an interception to his name tonight. And then the respectful, smart move is just run out of bounds, and, and then you can let your offense let this clock go. Brandt looks like he's going to get under center here and just kneel it down for the rest of the way. Probably have to do that just this time and one more, and that should seal the victory for the Bethany Broncos. Good football game. Hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you here tonight. It was a different type football game, a game that takes us back a number of years as you see a defensive struggle like this. So many of these scores, and I guess we'll have some of the other final scores from across the state as we wrap it up after this game has concluded. And I'm sure there's several teams that got into the 60s, and you'll probably have a couple of games that maybe even combined for 80 or more points and you mentioned last night you've kind of seen it trickle down from you know pros in college down into this high school level where teams are putting up those big numbers and you don't see it uh, very often but every now and then there will be a game like this one where where both teams are under 20. all right that's the final bethany's going to win it 17 to 8 our final score on the evening bethany moves to 4 and 0 blanchard falls to 1 and 3. we'll come back with our post game show right after this from your oklahoma four dealers
game of the week is the best in Oklahoma, and it's live on your view, Cox Channel 3. Thursday night, the Bishop Kelly Comets will be at Tulsa's La Fortune Stadium to play the Edison Eagles. What will the Comets do to stop Edison's record-setting running back, Sevion Morrison? Edison may have their hands full with Kelly's Cooper McMurray, as both teams try to get a good start in district play. It's Bishop Kelly and Edison Thursday night at 7, live on your view, Cox Channel 3. Thursday night is football night with a Ford game of the week. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. Well, there you can see both teams. I don't really think that they're congratulating each other because, as you mentioned, this is a rivalry contest, and there's no love loss between these two teams here tonight, but Bethany wins it in a close game, an exciting game, 17-8, to our final score. Let's take a look at those highlights. Let's go all the way back to the first half on our highlight list here, and right away we're going to start with the fake punt by Bryce Madrin, and to this point, this was pretty much all of their offense for uh, Blanchard. Yeah, and like I, I've mentioned a couple of times, it didn't seem like there was really any pressure on the punter, and so he's got, does that rugby-style punt, so he kind of goes with it for a couple of steps and says, well, if you guys aren't going to come back here and get me, I'll take it myself and see if I can get this first down yardage. And it was, I want to say, a fourth and 12 on that one, so it was a little bit of a ways to that first down marker, but he was able to reach it and get that, uh, uh, that offense rolling a little bit. All right, and then we're going to see two defensive plays, interceptions by both teams. First, we're going to see Bethany coming up with the pick here and a nice read by Claiborne. Yeah, and he was just in the right spot at the right time. That quarterback kind of stared down the receiver and didn't quite sell that play action, sell that handoff, and so it was an easy interception for Claiborne. And then Blanchard's going to turn it over the other way as they're going to be able to come up with an interception to keep Bethany from getting on the scoreboard. Yeah, and this was just back-to-back uh, -back -back plays here. Sam Brandt on the run, throws that one deep, and then the uh, interception from Whit Carpenter, who kind of just snuck under the receiver and, and kind of stole that one away, uh, which is kind of interesting because it, it almost happens on the flip side later in the game. And then we had the only points of the entire first half, right with 30 seconds left to go. Bethany finally finds the end zone, and they go on top by a score of 7 to nothing, with a nice little short pass from Sam Brandt as he was able to hook up with the wide receiver here. Yeah, the wide receiver kind of just does a, a quick up and then curls back out uh, and just kind of sneaks into that corner of the end zone and just a perfectly placed ball, and he threw it where the receiver needed to be rather than throwing it where he was at the time. All right, so 7 nothing. It was Bethany on top at the half and then we come out for the second half and their first possession Bethany makes it a 14 nothing score yeah it was uh, like you said that first possession for Bethany back-to-back -back scores for him and it started with this big play here that uh, kind of opened this game up to a, a new level of of uh, where it was kind of defense in that first half and then the offense in the second half and that was where it really kind of kick-started was that big play that deep ball down there and, and you and I talked about it was it really kind of a moss or not it's not my definition of it but you said it may be fitting into your definition okay. of it but uh, a steal of a, a reception there and a touchdown on the play all right and then Blanchard you got to watch this run here because things got interesting from this point forward yeah and it seemed like the Bethany defense said oh he's going down and they kind of just let uh, the would be tackler uh, go for it and uh, Medill's or not Medill um, Madrin I don't know why I said Medill <laughs> Madrin able to to slip through the tackler and then ends up busting that into the secondary and he's gone and it's six points for Blanchard and just like that it becomes a really tight ball game and uh, as Blanchard tries to get a little bit closer here's a big goal line stand for Bethany. Yeah, this one was a, a, a long, it seemed like, possession here just in this five-yard line. It seemed like they were down here forever trying to decide how they were going to try to attack the Bethany defense. And finally, the quarterback keeper up that left side on fourth and one falls just shy. And we were talking about it. It was so close that I think uh, we were getting kind of confused whether they were saying it was in or not. And uh, they, they say at the end of the day he didn't make it into the end zone and falls just short of that goal line. That uh, gave... Bethany horrible field position and that resulted in two points for Blanchard as they are able to tackle the ball carrier in the end zone for the safety to make it 14-8. Yeah, Blanchard brings the full house. I'm trying to count them up real quick. It's probably about eight to nine guys coming into the backfield as quick as possible and that runner's got nowhere to go. Tackled in the end zone, two points on the board for the Blanchard Lions. And then uh, the ensuing kickoff, Blanchard Again, with a big return as uh, things were up in the air for a little while as to who might just win this game. Uh, yeah, and this is where uh, my big friend Mo was on the side of the Lions as he started to uh, make his appearance for Blanchard and a huge kick return there off of that punt uh, from the safety 
And so that gave Blanchard great field position to start. They were already in the red zone uh, to start the possession, but as you'll see here in a second, they came up empty-handed. And then, of course, we uh, Bethany again in uh, deep in their own end zone, but they come up with a big pass play and big yardage here, and that, that kind of helped them see the, uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, this kind of iced that game for them as uh, that wide receiver coming across the middle, number seven for Bethany was uh, Jordan Flinton. And a guy who really hadn't gotten involved in the offense a terrible amount tonight uh, comes up with one of the biggest plays of the night as Sam Brandt finds him on the crossing route. And then Sam Brandt here is going to have a nice run that's going to set up the winning field goal as he gets deeper into Blanchard territory. Yeah, I mentioned it in the game, was 138 yards last time out for him. And in this game, it seemed like he was uh, pretty quiet, especially on the ground. It seemed like Blanchard kind of keyed in on him uh, as a rusher. And then right there, busting that one open late in the game, getting through the defense and uh, a huge run. And that kind of just uh, let those doors uh, close on Blanchard's chances. That up, that set up the field goal by Stoops, and then the interception to steal, seal the victory right here. Yeah, and that was the end of the game. That was all she wrote right there as the pass goes over the receiver's head and an easy interception for number 33, Jocelyn Alaska. So that'll do it tonight from Blanchard. Our final score once again, the Lions uh, fall to the Bethany Broncos, the number two rated team in Class 4A, by a final score of 17 to 8. My thanks to my partner, Dylan Rivera, also to Tanner Wade, Brad Shelton, and Riley Cowan. Thanks for all your help, guys. We do appreciate it. And to Mark Jeffries, who runs the whole ship here for us. We certainly appreciate all he does for us as well. Happy to bring you your Oklahoma Ford game of the week. We'll have the replay for you up in a couple of days, so you'll be able to watch it again on yourview.com. I'm Steve Marshall. We'll see you next time, everybody.